Never easy to win the NBA championship. Just ask Denver Nugget fans, for example. Starting as the Denver Rockets in 1967, in the now defunct American Basketball Association, the Nuggets never made the NBA Finals prior to last season, much less winning the whole enchilada. And then there are teams like the Phoenix Suns who have never won an NBA title. But as bad as the Suns have been during the postseason, other teams have been much worse. In fact, there are five teams who have never even reached the NBA Finals. But why is that the case? Bad luck, bad management, not enough time. Each of these franchises are to be analyzed to better figure out what went wrong, what's going wrong, and what may continue to go wrong or right for that matter. Let's dig a little deeper why these five teams have never made it to the NBA Finals. Number one on our list, the Los Angeles Clippers. Their best finish was during the 2020-21 season, 47-35 and record, and they lost to the Suns four games to two.
before you know it, you'll know my name and how to pronounce it. You know the meaning of Kokunka. Before you know it, you'll call me son. You call me daughter. You call me brother. You call us sisters. Your family will make a difference in how America is perceived and what America stands for. And we invite you to welcome an exchange student like me to your home and your family. For over 70 years, AFS USA has brought exchange students from around the world to study in the U.S. and live with an American family for a school year, semester, or 6 to 12 weeks. Before you know it, you'll be a proud AFS host family. Visit AFSUSA.org. Sure, my family loves me. They bought me this sweet new collar. My dog bowl is always full of Fido's finest. Heck, they even take care of the personal stuff on my walk. Come on, who does that? But what really sealed the deal for me was when they installed a security system from Forest Security. Hey, I'm no watchdog, you know. Forest Security offers the latest in technology and security for our home. Yeah, I'm pretty good at keeping an eye on things, but I also have stuff to do like sleep and socialize. A smart security system can provide around-the-clock awareness and generate instant smartphone alerts. They let the family know if something is wrong or suspicious. They do all of the work for us, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You know what they say, you can't trust a dog to watch your house or your sandwich. Call Forest Security today. Call us today at 708-452-2000 or visit forestsecurity.com. For over 60 years, Air Room has been creating award-winning kitchens, carefully executed by our in-house team of designers and remodelers. With a renewed focus on spending quality time at home, Air Room has created its most affordable kitchen transformation program yet. Introducing the Revive Kitchen. Imagine, custom-made cabinetry, quartz countertops with a waterfall-wrapped island, soft closed drawers featuring walnut interiors, even an invisible phone charging station in multiple colors, styles, and configurations designed to fit almost any home. Over 14 upgrades in all. Call the number on your screen to set up a free design consultation, which includes 3D color renderings of your project. This limited time introductory offer can be yours for as little as $4.99 a month with zero money down or zero interest and installed in as little as three weeks. The Revive Kitchen with all the luxury and experience Air Room is known for.
For over 60 years, Air Room has been creating award-winning kitchens, carefully executed by our in-house team of designers and remodelers. With a renewed focus on spending quality time at home, Air Room has created its most affordable kitchen transformation program yet. Introducing the Revive Kitchen. Imagine custom-made cabinetry, quartz countertops with a waterfall-wrapped island, soft closed drawers featuring walnut interiors, even an invisible phone charging station in multiple colors, styles, and configurations designed to fit almost any home. Over 14 upgrades in all. Call the number on your screen to set up a free design consultation, which includes 3D color renderings of your project. This limited time introductory offer can be yours for as little as $4.99 a month with zero money down or zero interest and installed in as little as three weeks. The Revive Kitchen, with all the luxury and experience Air Room is known for.
The early 2000s was a weird time for the NBA, a post-Bulls Jordan League that lacked an overall depth and talent, yet was the last premier era of the NBA big man. You had established superstars such as Shaquille O'Neal, Chris Webber, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and Alonzo Mourning. You had the up-and-comers such as Kenyon Martin, Marcus Camby, Ben Wallace, Dirk Nowitzki, Pau Gasol, Tyson Chandler, and Elton Brand. You even had the veteran Hall of Famers on their last leg, such as Akiva Olajuwon, Patrick Ewing, David Robinson, Karl Malone, and De Kembe Matumbo, truly a golden era of big man in every phrase of the word. And the big man we'll be focused on today would likely fit in the early 2000s up-and-comer bracket, Jermaine O'Neal. Drafted 17th overall straight out of high school in the historic 1996 NBA draft class that featured Kobe Bryant, Ray Allen, and Steve Nash, O'Neal became the youngest player to ever play in an NBA game at that time. His career lasted 17 seasons, playing for the Trailblazers, Pacers, Raptors, Heat, Celtics, Suns, and Warriors. After joining the Pacers for the 2000-2001 season, O'Neal's career hit an apex that lasted from the 2001-2002 season to the 06-07 campaign. This stretch included six straight All-Star appearances, three straight All-NBA teams from 2002 to 2004, he was second team in 2004, and a conference finals appearance in 2004. In an era stuffed with centers and power forwards, who ranged from high-quality starters to Hall of Famers, O'Neal was regarded as one of the best in the league during that time. As impressive as he was during his peak, was it enough for him to be considered for the Basketball Hall of Fame? As good as he was as a pacer, the rest of his career was average at best and arrestable at worst, pun intended. He started in Portland for the 1996-97 season, where he played the next four seasons. These Portland teams made the playoffs each season he was there, and even made the conference finals back-to-back -back years in 99 and 2000. In 2000, they took the Lakers to seven games, losing 89-84 in the historic game that featured the iconic Kobe Deshek alley-oop in the closing minutes of the game. By the way, Portland was up by more than 10 points in the game. It was a very successful run for Portland, a run that O'Neal had little to nothing to do with. During his time with the Trailblazers, O'Neal never averaged over 13.5 minutes per game. His most impactful season came in 1998, where he averaged 4.5 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 1 block per game. As underwhelming as O'Neal's career was when he was with Portland, it's hard to place a ton of blame on him for his struggles. In a time where selecting a high school player was still considered a taboo move, he was a teenager playing with grown men. The center and forward positions were especially stacked for Portland, in a roster that featured Arvdaz Sabonis, Rasheed Wallace, Scotty Pippen, Detlef Schremp, and Brian Grant. Unless they're an instant generational talent, it's extremely hard for a young prospect to get playing time for an NBA team contending for a title. You even see this in today's NBA, with the Golden State Warriors still trying to figure out how to fit their younger prospects into the rotation. Hard to hold Jermaine's first four seasons against him. After the Pacers went into a mini-rebuild parting ways with veterans Mark Jackson, Rick Smith, Chris Mullen, and head coach Larry Bird, they traded for O'Neal in 2000. He was put into their starting unit and instantly made huge strides, posting career highs in every major statistical category other than field goal percentage, which makes sense because he went from taking three to four shots per game to 10 plus. He would average 12.8 points.
For over 60 years, Air Room has been creating award-winning kitchens, carefully executed by our in-house team of designers and remodelers. With a renewed focus on spending quality time at home, Air Room has created its most affordable kitchen transformation program yet. Introducing the Revive Kitchen. Imagine custom-made cabinetry, quartz countertops with a waterfall-wrapped island, soft closed drawers featuring walnut interiors, even an invisible phone charging station in multiple colors, styles, and configurations designed to fit almost any home. Over 14 upgrades in all. Call the number on your screen to set up a free design consultation, which includes 3D color renderings of your project. This limited time introductory offer can be yours for as little as $4.99 a month with zero money down or zero interest and installed in as little as three weeks. The Revive Kitchen, with all the luxury and experience Air Room is known for. Before you know it, you'll know my name and how to pronounce it. You'll know the meaning of Kopkunka. Before you know it, you'll call me son. You call me daughter. You call me brother. You call us sisters. Your family will make a difference in how America is perceived and what America stands for. And we invite you to welcome an exchange student like me to your home and your family. For over 70 years, AFS USA has brought exchange students from around the world to study in the U.S. and live with an American family for a school year, semester, or 6 to 12 weeks. Before you know it, you'll be a proud AFS host family. Visit AFSUSA.org. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel 
From architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design, we found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects, builders, remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel, from architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design. We found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects, builders, remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. Before you know it, you'll know my name and how to pronounce it. You'll know the meaning of ขอบคุณค่ะ. Before you know it, you'll call me son. You call me daughter. You call me brother. You call us sisters. Your family will make a difference in how America is perceived and what America stands for. And we invite you to welcome an exchange student like me to your home and your family. For over 70 years, AFS USA has brought exchange students from around the world to study in the U.S. and live with an American family for a school year, semester, or 6 to 12 weeks. Before you know it, you'll be a proud AFS host family. Visit AFSUSA.org. I'll just hold on. Alright, we're gonna run one more, then we'll go. Before we celebrated this special this night, <laughs> before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel, from architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design. We found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects, builders, remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. No, other one. Mem get rid of that. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Sports Broadcast Solutions slash NFA Network. It's a collaboration broadcast tonight. I'm Kyle Smith alongside Bob Bill Sway. It's the Barrington Broncos about to take on Glenbrook South. And partner, one of those rare occurrences, but we got them this year. Glenbrook style sneaked in 
with a four and five record. Well, you call it sneak then, except they're a lot better than that, right? They were one of just six at-large teams to qualify with a losing record, right? But they're not a pushover, right? The Broncos beat them earlier this year by a score of what, just 27 to 19? That's one score in my book. We might say two because you got to get the two-point conversion. But Glenbrook South last year, they were a good team. They were 10 and one last year. This year, they started out 0 and four. Four opponents, York, Lake Zurich, Barrington, and Prospect all beat them, but their combined record is 32-4. and four. And the other loss, only 8-1 Maine, Maine South. So this Glenbrook South team is a very, very good team, they even though they're... They lost by eight points to Barrington. Right, right. That's true. So do you think that Barrington thinks about that at all, knowing that, hey, we beat this team but barely and our season ends if we lose tonight. Oh, absolutely. That's first and foremost in their thoughts. I mean, they're 9-0. They roll over everybody, but they couldn't roll over Glenbrook South. There's good reason. Glenbrook South has a strong defense. They've got a running game. The clock ends faster when you play Glenbrook South. So Barrington won't be able to roll up 50 points tonight because, you know, Glenbrook South is going to control the ball on the ground. Now, if you're Barrington, you have to focus on that run game. Stop the running, you know, and then force passing. It was fun to watch the warm-ups, so before, when Glenbrook, North, or Glenbrook South was doing their warm-ups with the quarterbacks, very well-coached team. The three quarterbacks that they had were going back in synchronous steps, throwing 40-yard passes. I, I don't think I'd sell Glenbrook South short. Glenbrook South short. They played a tough schedule this year. That's why they have a negative record. Yeah, they were 4-1 and one in conference, which helped them get in, even though they have a 4-5 and five record. By the way, they're not the only 4-5 and five team, so this is kind of a new thing, but also not so new for the IHSA, letting 4-5 and five teams get into the postseason. You do well in conference play, you still get in. Well, it was six of those teams, you know, and, and, and they, but they deserve to be one of those teams that, that got in. Now, uh, conversely, 9-0 at Barrington, a lot of people are saying, hey, they're a potential state champion here. So you've got a 4-5 and five team that you could argue got in. You know, you, you say snuck in, but they earned it, even though they were 4-5. and five. You know, Barrington is a very, very strong team. So Glenbrook South is up against it. But if Glenbrook South wins this game, and I don't think you should count them out, I just don't know how they can win. They haven't passed the ball that well all season long. Piper for Barrington, he's been really impressive all season, partner. One of the wins over Prospect, five touchdown passes to five different receivers. Well, and that's exactly it. Barrington is very balanced offense, not only to, the, in your case, as you call the five different receivers, but between the run and the pass. You look at the stats in the paper, I mean, oh my gosh, the you know, quarterback's got, you know, what, 1,300 yards passing or something, and, you know, Glenbrook North, uh, Glenbrook South. I keep saying Glenbrook North, you know, because I went to Glenbrook North. Yeah. You know, I can't say Glenbrook South. That's our arch enemy rival. But anyway, so Glenbrook South passing game is, I don't want to say non-existent, but certain not, certainly not very strong. They don't have any receivers with over 200 yards. Only three of them have over 100 yards. And Barrington's three receivers are like 350 or 400 yards each. They do have Ryan Canning, though, who broke a school record with six rushing touchdowns against Evanston. So if you're bearing tonight, Bob, do you put eight in the box and just force Glenbrook South to pass it all night long? Uh, pretty much. Yeah, I don't know if you even need eight in the box, but they absolutely have to focus on him. When he's running, you know, going to run right, you can tell by the formation, formation, you stop him that way. Don't let him get wide. If you're going to let him go anywhere, let him go up the middle. You know, he's little, right? So he's like 185 pounds, 5'10", I think it is. So you got to get him inside. You can't let him get around the edge. Now, tonight, it's not so easy to get around the edge because of the uh, the wet turf. So right. it's, Not that wet, though. It hasn't poured today. Poor, it hasn't poured it's well, like a <laughs> some drizzle but no pouring like non-stop drizzling this whole last hour that we've been setting up right the field's wet but it's going to be hard to get around on the edge because of that reason but nonetheless Barrington has speed in the secondary speed on the outside so they're going to be able to run him down but if they fo force him into the middle it'll be a long day for Glenbrook North South because they don't have a passing attack I know that Glenbrook South played them tough almost won against Barrington it's a new season though everybody's 0-0 Barrington knows if we play our game, we got a shot to go all the way to the state finals. It hasn't been done since 1998. They lost that game, by the way. Barrington has never won the state title. Yeah, the first part's exactly what Coach Joe Sanchez said earlier. It's a new season. You know, 9-0. It doesn't matter. You're both 0-0 in the playoffs. And, you know, one game and you're out. You know, Nolan did a great job on that interview, drawing that out of Joe Sanchez earlier in the pre-season and the pre um, the pre-interview, um, pre-game interview, but uh, he's well aware of that eight-point win, and he knows he's got to improve on that eight-point win because you can't be eight points up in the fourth quarter against Gumberg South the way that they can own the ground. So Barrington, if they haven't won by the third quarter, that's they're going to consider that a loss. But obviously, whoever's ahead at the end of the game goes on. I just haven't seen enough from Glenbrook South passing attack all season long, partner. I know they played well against Maine South, but that was in garbage time. They were down 45-20. They scored 60 unanswered. It wasn't garbage time, though. You play a little cover, too. Allow them to get big plays over the middle. Maine South hold on, held on to win that game. I know that they can play a little offense, Glenbrook South, but I think Barrington 35, Glenbrook South 7 today. 
Well, I, I, I'm right there with you on the prediction. I, I don't know if you get 35 points against Glenbrook South, maybe 28. Um, but, you know, Glenbrook South, it's going to be a hard road to get these points against Barrington again. They did it once, right? But now Barrington, being the, the tough team that they are, right. you know, knows how they got those points, and I think we'll know how to shut them down. And you play a lot differently when your season's on the line versus week four, week five. Well, you do, and now to be also fair, it's kind of windy, a little bit, um, well, certainly misty out here, and there's wind, so maybe Barrington's passing attack can't be quite as strong as you might expect it to be, so Barrington's run game is going to come into play here as well. The good news is Dylan Fitzgerald had over 200 yards rushing, 220 in fact, against Fremd earlier in the season. Well, and I feel like that's a solid, I mean, it's, it's a solid front line to run behind as well. Barrington's a very, very good team year in, year out. Yeah, I mean, if you're making predictions, you have to go with Barrington here. It's that I don't think it's going to be as easy of a cakewalk over Glenbrook South as some people might think. Right. I mean, people don't always go on maxpreps.com and check the previous games that Barrington played, and it was a tough game with Canning leading the way. I just don't think Canning's going to have those 200-plus rushing yards. He might, though, partner. He's averaging over 196 rushing yards per game. Well, exactly right, and that's exactly who Barrington has to stop. If they can stop him, there's not much else after that that Glenbrook South has, but don't sell them short for being able to not stop that. Glenbrook South has been able to put their will on to other teams. And the starting running back from last year, I, I, Cotton, I think, was he had um, the leading rusher going into this year and obviously lost the job to, to Canning. Yeah, he's been great, but they're going to need him. They, <laughs> As we saw in that uh, that YouTube video, he's going to have to put the team on his back, a eh? Greg Jennings style for uh, Glenbrook South to win Well, tonight. it's going to be hard to do that, again, just by, you know, kind of teasing about that or right. playing into that, right? He's only, what, 5'10", 185 pounds. He's not that big of a well, guy, either, but he's a speed was merchant. Sproles. He wasn't big either. <laughs> well, he, it's a good comparison you're making there. You're saying this Canyon guy's going pro one day, right? <laughs> Well, you just never know. There are there's still a, there's still an era for small running backs. Garrett Wolf and and all the other small running backs. Danny Woodhead that did it. Well, and speaking of smaller guys, you know, I'm I'm a uh, you know both my kids went to Barrington High School, so I'm not exactly the most objective person in the world <laughs> when it comes to Barrington football. But my daughter Marissa had her locker next to Scotty Miller in in you know school, of course. And if you're a Barrington fan, you all know who Scotty Miller is. Right. Darn good football player plays for the Falcons now. We're going right. to take a break. F more football action coming up next on SBS. Nope, mute the mic, mute the mic, mute the mic. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel, from architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design. We found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects. Builders. Remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. Yeah, and yeah, we actually genuinely like each other. It works out yeah, well that way. There's there's some chemistry. We we know each other and been around the industry too long. <laughs> He's actually a professional, and I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now, now you know how hard it is. No, I, I never thought it was easy to be fair, but like you just like you'll be like boom, boom you'll click like eight things, and I'm like, bro, hold on a second. He's actually hard to argue with because he actually uses facts on his side. He's like a genius. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. Okay. All right, it's group, so like I'm gonna get rid of this. When the game starts, you can bring it back. I'll help you. What does group do? It gets rid of it because we don't need it right now because the game has a start. Back to the action. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Vilsaway. We appreciate everybody subscribing on the NHS Network page. And Bob, I mean, here, here are the, the, the Glenbrook South notes. If we haven't already talked about them. Four and five team. They lost 27 to 19 to Barrington back in week three. They started the season 0 and 4. 
So it did not look like they were going to make the postseason. A big win over their arch rival in Glenbrook North to even get here. They were 2-5, two and five, a two-game winning streak to end the season for the Titans. For the Barrington Broncos, they've basically been dominant. They're 9-0 for the 10th time in school history. They're, they're trying to win this one for their offensive line coach. He's been dealing with a lot of, of, uh, of health problems thus far in the season. They've never won the state title. Their best finish was second place in 1998, and they beat four teams over 500 in 2023. So for people that think, oh, Barrington's 9-0 because they had a bad schedule. No, they had a very tough schedule, four teams over 500. No, Barrington is a very, very strong team year in and year out. No kidding, they have a with shot. A, with at a good strength of schedule. Well, well, yeah, and they have a shot at the, the state championship. They're actually right there. I mean, they can win it. But, I mean, they got to get through good teams like Glenbrook South. Now, you, you know, again, you want to sell Glenbrook so South with the, the, the low record, right? But Barrington is a very, very strong team, and you can only beat strong teams if you're going to win the state championship. So, But they're they're equipped. They've got a, a terrific offense, high-powered. It's not just running. It's not just passing. They have a, a strong defense. They're fast. So, I mean, I, again, I, I didn't put a prediction on, on, in play this time, but I, I'm seconding yours. I think something like 35-7 to 7 is probably a pretty good choice for a final. Yeah, you said it might be tough for GBS to score. Well, for Barrington to score 35 on, on GBS, so maybe 28-7. to 7. I just don't see enough of the passing attack for Glenbrook South to get it done. Any kind of passing day, especially with that slightly wet turf, it's probably going to be a lot of passes in the flat to Canning. Well, and exactly right. And Barrington is going to focus on stopping that run. They know that that's what they have to do. And when they do, it's going to be tough for Glenbrook South to move the ball at least consistently through the air. But whereas Barrington can go pass or run, and they're more diversified in their offense. So it's windy up here right now. So hopefully in the microphones, you're not hearing the wind. But we're on top of the press box as opposed to in the press box. It has been raining for the last hour. So we're working hard to keep the equipment out of the rain. But it's it's a totally unobstructed view up here, and it's uh, maybe it's a little bit chilly, but it's perfect football weather. I mean, earlier I was doing the lawn, raking the leaves and all. It was like 80 degrees, it felt like, and then all of a sudden at 4 o'clock, the front came by, and it was about, what, 66 degrees? So it's, a, you know, maybe, what, 60 right now? Ch a little bit chilly-ish, but perfect football weather. So here we go, led by Nick Piper. He's number 10, the, the offense for the Broncos. They will kick off to Glenbrook South. Oh wait, Barrington's usually in the in the red, but they're going to wear the black today, and then Glenbrook South's in the white. So Glenbrook South is kicking to Barrington. Apologize for that, folks. They yeah, picked the should, one night where they usually wear the where they they picked the one night to wear black when they usually wear the 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 well, the, 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 uh, the red. Well, you're supposed to let the color announcer handle the colors of the jerseys, right. aren't you? Yeah. Just like that famous AT&T commercial. That's a great commercial. They have Lily, and then they have the the color announcer announcing the colors of the teams. Jacob Pragnitz will kick off. And it's windy, so it'll be interesting to see what happens to this kick. And it's a decent one. A very decent one, right to the goal line. Yeah. And remember, it's an automatic dead ball in high school, so no returns once it gets to the end line. Travis Soto wanted to run with it, but uh, the official says, no soup for you. Well, uh, <laughs> he yeah, can't right. Run with it. Well, I think he knew he, he couldn't run with it, but maybe that's why he ran with it. So here we go, partner. Uh, Barrington can really set the tone with an early touchdown, but just get a couple of first downs. You don't want to give Glenbrook South any kind of hope as we get close to the second quarter. Well, it's like any sport. You want the lead. You know, we say in volleyball, too, first one to five, right? Basketball, you know, first one to, to ten. You know, there's whatever the sport is, you want to be the first one to score. It's always easier to play with the lead as opposed to trying to, uh, you know, come back from a deficit. So here we go. It's a running play right up the middle. Breaks through a tackle still on his feet. First and 10 for the Broncos. And see, that's trouble, right? It went right up the middle. There was no real tacklers on that play, uh, almost untouched until he got to like the 10 yards past the line of scrimmage, and Glenbrook South has got to be able to wrap him up. That's not a good start at all, even though it's only a data point of one play. So it'll be first and 10 at the 35. Clock continues to run with 11.42 to go. And then it's completed over to the 40-yard line, completed over to Fitzpatrick. It's almost like the traditional first play from scrimmage. It's always a five pass and out, you know, five yard uh, and out just to get the quarterback's arm loose. I'm thinking if you're a defensive coordinator on the first play of the game, you, you uh, <laughs> shoot that one. It's windy. I wonder what the mics are hearing. Little bubble screen out to the right. Still with it is Nazhan. He gets the first down and partner. 
the Titans might need to start blitzing soon as it's just really easy pickings right now for Piper. Well, you really can't blitz on those plays, those five and outs, and that's how you stop a blitz, right? You're uh, going around the blitz, going quickly. In fact, it's, if, if you blitz on those, you have one less, two less tacklers. So Glenbrook South has to, you know, play tighter man-to-man. -man. Right now they're, what, seven yards off. First and 10 at the 49, run up the middle, gets a couple of yards, and we'll say about three. Decent run, but one of the first times that Glenbrook South has gotten some kind of penetration up front. Well, and still, that was, I mean, you said three, but what, four, maybe five yards on that yeah, play? Yeah, they say he got five. Right, and well, you, you got tackled at three and then fell forward for two more, right? But so every play, Barrington has run, has been successful, and they're just marching right downfield. It's Second and five start. at the 49 with 10.55 to go. Throw to the right. Tough pass, but Piper felt the pressure. He was trying to complete it to Wizar, and it'll be third and five. And partner, if you get a couple of yards here, Barrington could consider going for it. Oh, I think they'll, they'll do the video game football brand here. Uh, Glenbrook South will probably have to punt it when yeah. they're in the fourth and five. But Barrington, I think they'll go for it. You got to remember, though, it's a Glenbrook South team that's not great at passing. Why would you want to give them some confidence with the ball at the 45-yard line? If you punt, you get them deep in their own territory, make them go the whole side of the field to score. Yeah, I think if I were Barrington, I would have kept the ball on the ground. Oh, Piper that's deflected. Deflected intercepted. up in the air and almost picked off. The that, closest D-back was Dennis Palapolos. Yeah, I, I think Palapolos would be better off uh, not diving, just running under it. We tell people all the time, run under the ball. Don't just dive for it. It's just like softball. You know, you get to first base faster if you run yeah. under it than if you slide to first. He had that interception. It was in his hands. But, you know, right time, right place, just half a step short. It's too bad. You know, football has changed, Bob. You have the analytics now. You want to have pass rushers, right? You want to have shut down corners. But if you can get that middle linebacker on a play like that where it's deflected up in the air, ball, ball, out to the right, <laughs> out to the right, it does help your teammates try to get that interception. So middle linebacker play, it's not as necessary in the older football games, but it's still a necessary part of the game nonetheless. Well, you were talking about the punting game earlier, so they did punt. They didn't go for it. So when it was a second and five, they decided to pass a couple of times, and you know neither one worked out. I would have run it both times, I think, but it's it's early, so yeah. you, you know. But I understand it, why Coach Joe Sanchez doesn't want to run it there. Why give this Glenbrook South team any kind of momentum? Make them go the whole side of the field, especially with a team that doesn't like to pass it that often. Well, if Joe Sanchez listened to me, he would have run twice, and there would be no Glenbrook South momentum. He would have made a first down. They'd still have the ball. Yeah. Anyway, but it was a great punt, so it's down at, what, the seven-yard line, and now Glenbrook South has to go 93 yards. We'll see if they can do it, and you know they're going to try to do it on the ground. Now, if I'm Glenbrook South, I'm sweeping right because that's where most of the green is. Only have one deep safety if you want to call him deep. Hand off off the right side. Didn't get much. Yeah, but I, I like the call, even though I wanted to sweep right. You go up the middle a couple, two or three times. You hold the, the defenders in, in between the hash marks, and then you go wide. It's kind of like uh, establish the middle and then go wide with it. But they're going to have to go left, go right, go up the middle. Don't go anywhere twice in a row. They're going to have to audible, you know, left or right, depending on, you know, pro or con, right, depending on where the, the linebackers are. So it's second and eight, ball at the eight. As it's a fake handoff, they do the jet sweep to the left and they get some decent yardage on that. So it'll be third and medium coming up for the Titans. Yeah, if the field weren't wet, we'd say that that's about, what, two or three yards in a cloud of those little black rubber pellets again, right? But I think the black rubber pellets are probably weighted down because of the rain. Third and four. I know you don't like to pass it, Bob, but you gotta be able to pass it a couple of times to keep these linebackers at bay. Otherwise, they're just gonna stack the box the whole game. Well, at some point, but I don't think I'd be passing here and deep in your own zone. It's only four yards to go. Again, I'd sweep right. There's lots of room over there. A little bit of speed can maybe uh, you know, beat the defender to the edge. Two in the backfield. They're gonna pass. Play action for the Titans. And he's got room to run. Oh, what a play at the last second. My goodness, what a play. And it was delivered. Uh, by the the pass rusher for Barrington, that's 88. Cade Heck. And what a great rush. He very, very patient, right? Pushed them back, didn't let him get around the edge. You know, there was room to run if he got around the left edge like that. But terrific defense from Barrington. That's what they got to do. They got to keep stopping the run, but that looked like a play action pass. It just, nobody was open, wisely held onto the ball and probably okay with the sack. But now I'm pretty sure you're punting it's hard to tell where the Fourth wind is. It's kind of a four. sideways wind. They've got Prignitz, the kicker. He's also the punter on this team to punt. Good snap. High arching kick. 
And it's near the 30. It's going to take a friendly Barrington hop. And the Bronco offense in great spot right here, Bob. What a play by Cade Hike. And it almost looked like it was going to be a quarterback sneak for the first down, but that sack has changed the complexion of this game a little bit. Well, speedy and patient defense on that, right? But now Glenbrook South, I, I feel like if Glenbrook South is going to win the game, they're going to have to win the game of the field position first, right? And this is not winning the field position game. So Barrington has the ball first and 10, 28 yards away from a touchdown with a pretty good offense. It only stalled because they threw two incompletes earlier. It's harder to pass today because of the, the windy and it's wet. Split backs, clean snap. Handoff with room to run, breaks off a tackle, still on his feet inside the 15. They hand it off to Fitzpatrick and Rince Ladd, the repeat partner, he looks like the same tailback that was unstoppable against Fremd. Well, and you, everybody, of course, knows I'm teasing with this, but you know, Joe, Joe Sanchez is clearly listening to the broadcast and saying, we got to run up the middle. And that's what they did, what, about 12, 15 yeah. yards on that? I would, just, I would just keep the ball on the ground to just play smash mouth football and run it in. Even though they have a passing attack, this is not the time to, that you need it. Off a tackle inside the five yard line. We'll see where they spot it. It was handed off that time to the tailback for Barrington. That's Colby Parkinson. And again, that's real tough for Glenbrook South. He's running wild right through the interior and there's just nobody there to tackle him. Glenbrook South is gonna have to figure out how they can put more guys in the box right off the line to, to stop those inside runs. Obviously then Barrington can go outside or play action. Hand off again that time to Fitzpatrick. He eyes the goal line. Did he get in? No call yet. There it is. Touchdown, Broncos. That didn't take long, partner. 7.29 left on the clock. It's 6-0, Broncos. It's just like they've been doing most of the season. Well, it's just like you said, didn't take long, right? Not even halfway through the first quarter. So if you do some math here, seven times four quarters times two, that could be 56-0. The extra point attempt on a windy day. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is straight through. A decent kick that time by Parkinson. We'll take a break. You're watching the Broncos against the Titans here on SBS. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel. From architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design, we found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects. Builders. Remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. Back to the action at 7 nothing in favor of the Broncos. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Vilsue. Some excellent runs by Dylan Fitzpatrick. Not the spot that the Titans want to be in, Bob, but not really surprising either. Well, they don't have a whole lot of choice, but I really like the play calls there on that second time Barrington had the ball. Just run it up the gut until Gumbrick South stops you, especially in kind of inclement weather type of days. It just doesn't look like there's a lot of tacklers in the box for Glumbrick South, so they're very susceptible to strong runs up the middle, and, you know, Barrington just keep doing it. It's a tough day for the Titans. You're playing a team that's 9-0. and Well, and I don't really think they're going to win 56-0, but if they can't stop those runs up the middle, you know, what are they going to do? Here we go. Past the 30 with room to run. Great block. Still with it, and Canning is finally brought down. I like the stiff arm there at the end, but I felt like if Canning went left instead of right on that last juke, right, he had some open green right up the middle. Some speed, some strength. Guy's good. Sorry, Canning's 34, that was 24, O'Connor. So O'Connor's good. Or was that, no, the, did the PA guy say Canning or O'Connor? I didn't actually listen to the PA guy, I'm sorry. Pitch play over the left as they get it that time to Cotton. Good run by Cotton. That's what I like, you get to the outside. Now there the ball was on the right hash, right hash mark, so I like the quick pitch to the left to get outside the Barrington defense. And that was kind of set up earlier as uh, Glenbrook South was running up the middle on the first drive when they were backed up to their own end line. So again, Glenbrook South, you just can't take them too lightly. They're only, what, 40 yards away from tying the game up. It's a one score game. So it's first and 10, ball at the 38. 
Yeah, I'd like to see him run right again this time. You know, again, that's where the green is. And then it's somewhere along the way, you want to reverse it back. So if Barrington's pursuit is too good when they run to the wide side, then you go reverse the other way. Handoff. As Canning with it. Some good yardage on that. I like the misdirection. Run right and handoff back left. So Glenbrook, North, uh, Glenbrook South is showing their potency here on offense in this drive. Second and four, one in the backfield. No, nope, they're gonna. It's two in the backfield now. Handoff off the right side. Looks like they're marking it short. Usually in high school games, you get anywhere near that first down marker, they give you credit for it. But I think they're gonna call it short. Third and a couple of feet. So if Barrington can uh, put a little bit of a stout defense here, put some pressure on it, push that ball back, make it a you know yard and a half for a first, and Glenbrook South will have a decision. I think they'll go for it though, but so if I'm Glenbrook South, you think and pound it twice. Third and one, it was a good run that time for Glenbrook South, Aiden Lozinski. Two in the backfield, pistol formation, and they're gonna get the first break it off attack, and that's the canning we all know and love. I like that spin, got another couple yards after that. So it looks like 24 from far away, you gotta look up really close to see the 34. So I was right the first time, canning on the run, the return and canning again. I mean, this might just be, you know, the old Walter Payton Bears offense. Canning up the right, canning to the left, canning up the middle, and that's how Glenbrook South needs to win tonight. Well, and canning is good, and they do have good blocking, and, and if they're gonna pass, it's gonna have to be off of the play action, and you don't wanna get down by two or three scores because nobody buys the play action at that point. But Glenbrook South is playing it well, well here. They're just down one score. They are driving. The ball's in Barrington's end, what, 24 yard line? So this is uh, not so bad here. Another running play. That time, Canning is stifled at the line of scrimmage by the Broncos. Yeah, it didn't get much. It's the only get touched at the line of scrimmage. You fall forward for your two yards, and your obligatory two yards. Now you got second and eight. They're going to credit the tackle. Vaughn Werner was the first one to get there, and also Soren Leahy gets the assist. Second and eight to 22. Under five minutes to go. The game's going to go fast today with uh, both teams running like this. Clock isn't going to stop. There's not a whole lot of first downs. Not too many passes that are incomplete. Here's going to be one. <laughs> Wide open. Over to Canning. He's going to get the first. <laughs> Bounces off a tackler. He gets a couple of yards. Partner, you, you can't be afraid to tackle this guy. you got to come up and greet him. He's got a lot of power between those legs. He's just going to run right over you. And that was a great play call. I thought he was going downfield to the deep left corner, right? But it, wide open uh, player in the flat. Eight yard, 10 yard gain, great play call. In the, uh, well, not the first time they tried to pass, right? But the first time he released the ball. Yeah. You're right, partner. On that first drive for Barrington, the analytics of the game has really scrutinized this. You want to limit possessions and you always want to take advantage when you can. You think, oh, that punt by Barrington doesn't matter. Well, if they hadn't punted and scored, it'd be 14 nothing right now instead of seven nothing. Over to the oh, right. this is Fumble. not good. <laughs> Ball loose, great job. <laughs> Just diving on it. You know, some some players, they're like, oh, there's 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 Barrington players three yards away from me. I can just pick it up and regain the yards. Can't do it there. It's wet turf. You just got to dive on and get that ball. Well, and that's exactly what coaches preach, right? They get the ball. That's all that really matters. It's gravy if you can pick it up and run. But if you try to pick it up and you accidentally boot it or you miss it and somebody else gets possession, you're, you're really in, 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 you know, the doghouse. But um, only – when you tackle the quarterback and the ball is loose and there's nothing but green between you and an end zone, would you even consider picking it up and running? And then only if you're a speedy, you, you know, safety uh, linebacker. If you're a, a slow lineman, you know, don't pick it up and run. You're not going to get very far anyway. Don't risk not getting the ball. Glenbrook South did the right thing getting on the ball. But that, that uh, fumble, it's like, what, third and 20 some odd? Second yeah, I was, well, actually... They lost more yards than I thought they did. I was surprised at first why they declined the penalty, but they actually lost 11 yards on that fumble. Yeah, it's a long way back, and with a running offense, it's going to be hard to get it all back. Rolls over to the left. you got to get that ball away, partner. It's a covered sack for Barrington, but not great quarterback play by Matoa. 
Well, he could have thrown that ball maybe out of bounds or something. He'd only lost another extra yard on that sack, so it's not like they lost a whole lot. But it's now third in a country mile. And again, with the running offense, I don't know how you're going to get this first down unless it's some kind of a, you know, a hold. But usually you don't get defensive holding on a running play. So you might think a, a slant over the middle and hope that uh, Barrington gets fooled and they grabs the receiver and get a first down that way, something. Otherwise, just you know, launch a bomb into the end zone, and whether it's intercepted or caught, it, it's not so bad. But getting the first down on the ground here is a lot to expect. So third and 23. Ball place of the 26, Bob. You got to get inside the 20 to even consider a field goal here. I agree. It's got. It's not. Okay, Glenbrook South took a timeout, but I agree. They, they have to move the ball at least that. And then with this wind, it's still unpredictable. Now the Barrington kick that was almost into the next zip code through the uprights on that extra point. We don't know what Glenbrook South is going to do on the on this field goal attempt if that's where they have to go. We'll take a break. You're watching SBS, the broadcasting network for everyone. Mute first. Mute first. No. Nope, mute. No. Nope. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel, from architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design. We found Air Room. Visit the Air Room Design Build Center in Lincolnwood to explore your home's potential. Air Room. Architects. Builders. Remodelers. Your project begins at airroom.com. Back to the action, Kyle Smith alongside Bob Billsway. Bob, I'm kind of surprised they called time out there as Glenbrook South really doesn't need to call a timeout. I mean, you know it's going to be a running play regardless. You kind of want to save those timeouts till the end of the second first half. Well, for sure. I don't know if it's going to be a running play for certain. I think if I were Glenbrook South, I would launch one in the end zone. Like I said, you know, throw, throw up a jump ball. If you catch it, touchdown. If you don't, well, it's intercepted. Maybe you get pass interference, something. Uh, so I think they'll pass. But I think it, the only reason for the timeout was they were confused. They didn't know what to run. They needed to call timeout. Another clean pocket, and then it's not. Clean pocket. <laughs> it was clean for a second, yeah. and then right after I said it, I did the broadcaster <laughs> jinx. Right. Like literally right after I said it, both tackles lost their man and he was sandwiched by the right and left defensive end. Well, Barrington understood that was a passing situation and boy, did they attack the quarterback yeah, on I that. I disagree with that because if you trust your kicker, and look, I, I don't see the kicker in practice like the coaching staff does. You get to the 20, it's a 37 yarder. I know it's high school, not college, but look, if you can't make a 37 yarder, well, it looked to me like a max protect play where they sent two yeah, players deep. Yeah, I'm surprised you don't just do a screen pass and just try to get six yards get it to the 20-yard well, line. Well, screen pass would have been a good call, but they did the max protect thing. They sent out two receivers into the corners and then yeah. hoped that they had enough time to pass and didn't. And here's a long field goal. Yeah, this it's a 49 a kick. Punt. It's a yeah, 49 it's got to be yarder, something different. We'll see if they actually kick it. They're going to kick. Snap is good. They kick it to line. Drive one right through. So it doesn't matter that they're sacked. 49-yard kick for Glenbrook South. We're going to take a break. It's 7-3 Broncos here on SBS. Before we celebrated this special night, before we fell in love with our home all over again, we searched for a company to handle our entire remodel from architecture and material selection to permits and complete construction with impeccable design. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast as much as we are. Kyle Smith alongside Bob Bilsaway. The text line's open. Your favorite high school, college, or NFL memory. Text 330-957-7653. So how about that, partner? Matoa gets sacked five yards back, so it becomes a 49-yard attempt, but a beautiful kick that time for Glenbrook South's Jacob Pregnitz and that makes it a 7-3 ball game. Yeah, you want to say so many different things, a 49-yard kick. First off, right when that kick got made, the buzz from the crowd was just unbelievable. I mean, obviously nobody expected that 49-yard kick to go through. It was a very low kick, so you know, kind of fortunate it wasn't stopped at the line of scrimmage, but it's absolutely accurate. Your point was, we don't see what they see in practice every day. Obviously, the coach had confidence in that kicker. You had a great point. If they had thrown a screen pass or something and got six yards, it would have been you know 10 yards closer than the way it was. 
But what a great choice to kick it. Went through the uprights, and boy, it was an electric yeah. buzz in the crowd. Well, what makes high school football so interesting, it's not a spot. So in, in college or the NFL, if you miss the kick, it's spotted where the holder is. In high school, it's just listed as a touchback, so it automatically goes to the 20. So if you cook, kick a 60-yarder, it doesn't really hurt your offense that much. Well, it was a wise decision to use a kicker on that when it got them those three points. And then the kicker was pumped, right, and put the next one into the end zone. So <laughs> Barrington gets the ball at the 20 here. So uh, Gumberg South winning the kicking game. They're ahead three to one. They sure are, yeah. Don't forget about <laughs> that return by Canning that set them right. up into that spot. So special teams, again, you just can't sell Glenbrook South short here. They're only down four near the end of the first quarter. Can they stop the run? That's the question for the Titans. Still not good. On his feet. And that's not good tackling right there by the Titans. No, and, uh, you know, being a little funny about this, you know, seven to three now near the end of the first quarter, you're looking at 28-12. And a lot closer than 56 nothing, but you got to be able to stop that run up the middle. I don't know how Glenbrook South is going to do it, putting another middle linebacker in, a, a, an extra uh, t tackle. I, they got to do something. Well, the problem is they just didn't get low. They didn't wrap up. It wasn't a very complex running attack or, or scheme that Barrington was doing there. They just didn't wrap up on the play. Well, Barrington has good up front blocking, but they're opening gaping holes. You could drive a Volkswagen through them. Yeah, I mean, there were some Glenbrook South players in the line of scrimmage. Meanwhile, run off the left side. Look at that hole. Incredible hole that time and it's still going. He's still on his feet as it's a I like that call run left that time right off tackle Calvin Jackson is gonna get credit for the first down But really the credit should go to that offensive line. They are just dominating the opposing defensive line That's right exactly now. what's happening here, and that's why I'm you know as much as Barrington has a good aerial offense I would keep the ground the, the, you know the ground game going you know up the middle off tackle like that uh, maybe a couple of sweeps, but uh, now here I like what Barrington's doing. They've got the three wide receivers, so they're limiting how many people can stop the run up the middle. Two in the backfield, handoff, off the left side. And a short gain that time for the Broncos. Yeah, that time they did stop the run, and that's what Glenbrook South has to do. Okay, you run a few times, you give up a few yards, but at some point in time, if you can stop that run and force Barrington in the air, you get those two incompletions like we saw earlier, and then they got the ball back. Well, this is going well right now for the Titans. They're keeping it close, and I don't know why, but Barrington is choosing not to pass the ball out right now. They want well, to keep I, that I mean, clock running, but. Yeah, this, well, this will run out to the end of the first quarter, but the reason is because running has been very, very successful. Yeah. You know, if whatever works, you keep doing right. it. The Barrington strength is definitely their passing game, but they can run the ball well, too. I mean, that's just, there's a reason why they're 9-0. and They're good at running, they're good at passing, and they're pretty darn good on defense as well. We're going to take a break. Second quarter coming up next here at SBS. Hi, guys. This is Alan from C1 Transportation. I have good news. We are hiring over-the-road drivers with two or more years of experience. Our drivers make $100,000 to $120,000 a year driving three to four weeks at a time. Don't miss your chance to start driving with C1 Transportation and call our recruiter right now. Back to the action, Kyle Smith alongside Bob Vilsoy. 12 minute quarters, somebody's already up 35 nothing in a playoff game. Yeah, right. But this one's seven to three. Fakes the handoff out in the flat. Good decision by Piper and first and 10 and more for the Broncos. Clock stops at 11.52. And with uh, Barrington doing so well on the ground, they, they want to get the aerial attack going. That was a good time to do it, right at the end of the first quarter. They have time to call a nice play. It was good safe pass short right roll now they're on the right side so they can run back left if they want i mean if you're glenbrook south here you've got to force him to three giving up six would really hurt well it, it, glenbrook south has to stop the run that's what they absolutely have to focus on they got four linemen middle linebacker and there's no reason they shouldn't be stopping this run force barrington to pass and try to win the game that way 
Pipert with time, he's got a wide open man, left sideline, touchdown pass, right on target to Matt Merrish. 13 to three, they stacked the box that time, partner, and Piper made him pay. It made him pay, you couldn't have said it better. And, and on the call, he's wide open. He was wide open, I mean, the, the defender wasn't anywhere near him, it yeah. was a perfect pass. Even Mitch Trubisky could have completed that pass. Oh no, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky completed the pass. Not gross, but he would have overthrown him by three yards. What would have happened if Bajant threw it to him? Underthrew him. <laughs> would have been a perfect pass from Caleb Haney though. The legend of Bears quarterbacks. <laughs> So the Barrington kicker, you put the last one in the next zip code through the uprights to see what he does on this side. Yeah, both teams have excellent kickers. It'll be Nazha on the hole, it's a good hold. Kick is good, straight through the uprights by Parkinson's, it's 14-3 Broncos here on SBS, a broadcasting network for everyone. No, mute, mute. Before you know it, you'll know my name and how to pronounce it. You'll know the meaning of Kokunka. Before you know it, you'll call me son. You call me daughter. You call me brother. You call us sisters. Your family will make a difference in how America is perceived and what America stands for. And we invite you to welcome an exchange student like me to your home and your family. For over 70 years, AFS USA has brought exchange students from around the world to study in the U.S. and live within America. Kickoff coming up. It'll be the Broncos to kick off to the Titans. And partner, it's starting to get to that part of the game where the Titans might have to play video game football going for it inside their own territory on fourth down. Well, oh, I wouldn't do that, but uh, don't panic yet either. We're only talking about the very beginning of the second right. quarter. You're only down two scores. You do have a good football team. Yes, you're playing Barrington, but you know, you take the ball downfield, first down by first down by first down, whether it's on the ground or play action, something, right? And then get another turnover, you're right back in the game. Kickoff from Parkinson, Titans to receive. And it's inside the five on the return. With it right now is Cotton. Didn't get much. Tackled before he could get to the 20 yard line. And the Titans left to go the length of the field once again. Yeah, it was at, what, 93 yards at last time. Now it's what, uh, 84 yards they gotta go. And what a great tackle from Barrington on that return. Just flattened right at the, what, the 17 yard line. And I brought up having to go for it because it, Glenbrook South can't stop the run right now. So in theory, if you kick it back to the Broncos, it's almost like it's going to become 21 to three in a matter of minutes, the way that Barrington's going up and down the field right now. Well, two touchdown lead, right? Two, two scores. Glenbrook South has to focus on just getting this score and w figure yeah. out how to stop Barrington later. It's a good start. Good thing is they have a good running attack of their own. Right. Eats up a lot of clock. Again, I wouldn't panic. You're only down the two scores, no doubt. Glenbrook South has been here My before. My question <laughs> to you, though, is, Bob, knowing you can't stop the run, let's say you have fourth and two at your own 38. My theory would be to go for it because if I kick it back to Barrington, I just don't have a lot of confidence in my defense right now that they can that I can stop them from scoring another touchdown. Well, of course, I follow you. But it depends on the score, when in the game, et cetera. But, oh, there's going to be a holding yeah. call, I bet. He didn't have much of a hold either. You know, that's the first flag we've seen all the way into the second quarter. Pretty clean game from that respect. Well, either clean game or the officials just don't want to call every little thing. Because here's the thing. If you call it with 11.59 to go in the first quarter, you have to call it with nine seconds to go in the fourth quarter. you got to be consistent with your calls. I think I'm going to go with it's a clean game by both teams. <laughs> You're going to be an optimistic Oliver, not a negative Ned. Yeah, right. Wasn't there a, a, a Miami-Philly game where the penalties were like zero against Philadelphia or something? Was that the game? Anyway, this is 10-yard probably holding against uh, South. Now, they're um, second down and a lot of yards. Right. The, the, you, Gumbrick South cannot have penalties. And, and uh, you know, having not watched them, this year, they look like they have a pretty potent offense, at least on the ground. Maybe the, what they stop themselves by stopping themselves and sometimes with the flag. But this is the first flag we've seen today. So it'll be second and 14 at their own 13 as they're gonna run one in motion. That's Ellie Webby. And it's a pitch over to the left. Read well by the Broncos. Third and long coming up. Fantastic Next. open field tackle. On the tackle that time. For the Broncos was Andrew Markowitz. Nope, sorry, it's Brooks Howard. But what a great tackle. He had him in open field. You know, if you didn't get him by the ankles, 
another five or 10 more yards. Third 14 at the 16, you gotta get at least 10 to even consider going for it, but even then, you I, be at your own 25, no. you probably got a punt. Yeah. <laughs> they now spot a third and 11 at the 16. And it, Interesting running formation, but uh, it's not going to get much on it. Yeah, I don't think I would put the ball up in the air at this end of your end zone, uh, of your field, whatever in you want to call zone. it. Yeah, but I, I, I definitely think it was a good call. Run it, then punt this, move the ball downfield. Yeah. You know, it's still early in the game. You can still stop Barrington. You're going to have to figure out how to stop Barrington if you're going to win this game. By making it here, um, it doesn't help you in the long yeah. run that much. You're going to have to stop Barrington multiple times. If it was fourth and two, I'd consider it fourth and six. No. Well, fourth and two, I don't know that I would do that in my own end zone here this early in the game, down by two scores. You give the Barrington the ball back with only 20 the yards to go. The theory is the more first downs you get, you take a long time to score, and it minimizes the amount of time that Barrington can answer. Well, let's see how far this punt goes. Not a great Not hike. Not a great snap. <laughs> Good kick, though. Beautiful kick. Takes a very friendly Glenbrook South roll. Inside the 45. And well, we are impressed with the Glenbrook South kicking game and special teams. Kickers are people, too. <laughs> right. Except for the hike. <laughs> Did you ever see the video of when Pat McAfee just do dismantled Tristan Holiday on a punt return? I can't say I saw that one. It's pretty great. It's on YouTube. Granted, Tristan Holiday, I think he's less than 5'8". I think he's 5'5 five five or something. But still, you don't expect the, the, the punter to demolish your returner. <laughs> No, that's for sure you don't. Like, people know Pat McAfee, the broadcaster, but Pat McAfee, the football player, he can play. <laughs> First to 10, the 45. Oh, we see some more laundry on the field, and the play hasn't even started. It'll either be a sideline warning or delay a game. You very rarely see delay a game in high school football. Too many men on the field, wow. They cheated. Of course, now is when you make the joke. Well, we shouldn't. We should be seeing somebody quickly running off the field now, right? Where did that player go? The twelfth man is just a saying, folks. You're not allowed twelve men on the field. Handoff. They're gonna roll it off the right side. Look at that stiff arm action. One man to beat Fitzgerald with a fantastic run. That stiff arm got him to beat one man to beat. You know, one more juke there, and you're on your way. There was nobody else behind that safety on that play. Great run. Again, Gumber South just can't stop the Barrington run. They keep keeping the ball on the ground, especially now with an 11-point lead. Sure, you want to exercise your passing game, but right now, it's win or go home, keep the game on the ground, and win. First and 10 at the Titan 38. It's all Broncos tonight, led by Dylan Fitzgerald. Piper, only one big completion partner. That's it. He hasn't had to do a lot tonight. Yeah, one long completion. Must be nice when the only completion you need to do, your wide receiver's wide open down the sideline. He wants to be three for three with three touchdown passes. And they now run Fitzgerald in motion. Handoff, misdirection play with blockers in front. See, Glenbrook South probably feels pretty good that they stopped that play, but it was six yards later. I mean, you keep doing that, it, the chains are going to keep moving. Those little rubber pellets are going to keep flying and more first downs and more scores. And you hate to see it, the injured Titan is... Tyrone Cotton, the combination wide receiver cornerback. We'll take a break. It's 14-13 Broncos here on Sports Broadcast Solutions. Fourteen to three, partner. You hate to see it. You know, you talked about in the pregame show, Tyrone Cotton. He lost his starting job to Ryan to Nate Canning, and now he's hurt when his teammates need him the most in a playoff game. Well, I mean, he's getting up and walking off, so he, hopefully he's not hurt too bad. 
it's his last game, you know, of the season, quite possibly. But now he's looking like he's picking up speed and he'll be okay. But I, I was thinking earlier during the commercial that it's too bad the injuries on the other side in front of all the Barrington players. At least you're going to get hurt, get hurt in front of your own bench, right? But he's uh, he's good. Looks like he's going to be okay. Just got stung a little bit. He was down for kind of a long time though. Yeah. Well, okay as he he can walk to his car. Is he okay to play? <laughs> Two yeah. there's, two, there's two different OKs. That's also very true. Second and four, ball to 32. They all perked up at once. It's a big play right now for Glenbrook South. Got to find a way to get a tackle for loss. They haven't had a tackle for loss all night. And they might have gotten one. Did he get to the line of scrimmage? Fitzgerald on the carry. The defensive line absolutely did their job. There was an initial push of, with about you know six or seven Barrington linemen, but Glumberg South slipped through the cracks and was able to push back on it. One in the backfield, two wide receivers to the left. Piper, handoff. And tackle for loss for the Titans. Good so job. this is good for Glenbrook South. They are adjusting and they are stopping Barrington's run, which is going to push Barrington. They have to pass, which plays into what there's a flag on the play, but plays into what Glenbrook South needs to do. You got to stop him on the run, force him to pass, and then look for a, a turnover or obviously in completions. And that's how you're going to have to get the ball back. But if you can't stop the run, you're going nowhere today. Fourth and medium, I would punt because you haven't seen a lot out of Glenbrook South offense today. Well, I think you're going to see a penalty here, too. That's going to make it even tougher. Yes, they're going to punt. Yeah, you declined. declined. Oh, I don't know if I would have declined it because yeah. Barrington could still make it with this yardage. Uh, pushing that, them back yeah. five yards, that would have been right. the thing to do, I think, here. Here's, here's what Glenbrook South's thinking, partner. If you accept it to make it third and 14, Who's to say Barrington doesn't just get the first down on a bubble screen and then maybe scores a touchdown on yeah, it? Yeah, I thought the the call was motion, but um, so it'd be a five-yard oh, penalty. Yeah, it'd be third and nine instead right. of third and fourteen. But but whatever, still, th I think I'd rather have them in third yeah. and nine than fourth and four, knowing yeah. they've got this potent offense. I thought I saw a personal foul, which would have been fifteen. Yeah, yards. that's different, right? Now no backs. Oh, there's one. Sorry. You could do the hard count if you want, and Barrington did not like the formation that Glenbrook South ran on defense, so. They'll take a timeout, and we'll stick with the action. It's 14-3 to three in favor of the Broncos. What do you want to do here if you're Coach Sanchez? Do you want to run the hard count if you can't draw them off punt, or do you actually go all out and try to go for it? Well, I would run the play. I mean, if I'm Joe Sanchez, I would run the play, but if I'm Bob Vilsaway coaching, I would consider punting, actually. I think, like you had said earlier, Glenbrook South has not proven that they could – do anything with an, an, anything on offense, so I don't want to give them the ball here. On the other hand, you get your four yards in the first down. That's yeah, why Joe's. You make it 21 to three. The game's pretty yeah. much almost over. Well, it's a little dramatic, right? But but four yards here isn't that hard to pick up. But I think if it were me, I'd punt. I'd, I'd push Glenbrook South back, and even if it gets into the end zone, they get the ball at the 20 or something. I think it's still relatively safe. Do you run the hard count? I, I, I just am a, a, I've never been a fan of that. I, you say hard to count a lot, and I'm like, I just I just don't think Rogers. that works very often. Well, Rogers is very adept at it. Manning was good at it. Yeah, 20. Marino. You're talking about 20 year, you know, NFL Hall of Fame quarterbacks who are good at it. Well, so far Piper, it's in the backfield. They're gonna go for it. Piper with a clean pocket, and then as he throws, great play from behind. Excellent play, Glenbrook South still very much in this one. They go for it, we'll see if they regret that decision. Meanwhile, first and 10 for the Titans. Yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know, I don't want to second guess, guess a really great coach, but again, I just felt like they're moving the ball on the ground, you're getting 10 yards of crack. Down at the other end, they threw two incompletions when the, the ball was just moving on the ground. And here again, they went to the air on fourth down. Now, I'm not that two out of three things bad, you know, can happen, like yeah. an interception or fumble, but that's kind of what happened here. He got hacked from behind, fumbled it, and Gumberg South's ball right here. So what would it have been? They got the ball at the 32 versus the 20. I mean, it's only a 12-yard difference. Unless he gets it inside the 10. That punter's good. Well, it could have happened, yeah. But more likely, it's at the 20. It's only a 12-yard difference, so it doesn't really matter. And they had a chance to get the first. Hand off. Off the left side. Didn't get much. And whatever. Glenbrook South is going to have to move the ball. Barrington is absolutely uh, shutting down Glenbrook South's offense and running attack, and that's what they they set out to do. So what do you want to do if, if you're showing Wetter, the head coach for Glenbrook South, 
a couple of quick passes to get some confidence into your quarterback? I, it's not a bad call, play action if you do it, right? Slant something where the receiver's on the move. But it's still, I'm not giving up on this run. I'm Right now I'm running something wide right, quick pitch right. Right now there's nobody wide. It's almost like the student body is running straight up the gut. Nope, play, play action. action. Mawada, and he's sacked. Yeah, that's a tough call if the receiver's not open. They only sent one, uh, two players out in the in the pattern. So the one receiver's so. triple covered downfield, the other uh, in the flat. There's no way for that completion to happen. He'd, it was a, the appropriate sack for the quarterback to take. It was absolutely another max protect play. So Motoa is sacked, third and eight at 34 with 6.06 to go. Yeah, I think if you're Glenbrook South, if you're going to do that more, you have to have a delayed back come out somewhere into the flat. And then maybe send both those receivers one side on the field and send the guy on the flat to the left. And if you break one tackle, you can go a long way. But Barrington brought just about everybody in, too. There were only four defenders, which explains the sack. Pitch play to There's the that. right to Cotton. He's back in the game, and he's got a full head of steam on that run. Yeah, there was that quick pitch right, I think, that would be a good play. Now what would I do, quick pitch left? Let's, let's work this uh, defensive line a bit, make him run. Yeah, you got to question that that decision by Sanchez. You could have pinned him deep. They get well, pretty good field position, and now they're rolling right now a little bit on offense. Yeah, but they've rolled what? They were at the 32 or something like that. They've rolled what? About 10 or 15 yards. They would have started at the 20, maybe the 10, right? The 32. But by making on fourth down, you know, he felt like he had a chance to get a first down, maybe even a score. He was lucky that it wasn't uh, a strip and a pickup for more yardage for the Titans. That's for sure. It's a running play right now for Glenbrook South. Off the left side, penalty on the play. Initial inclination is holding against the Titans. He didn't even have much running room either. That's again, again another penalty that Glenbrook South doesn't need. When you're running offense, you're not getting big chunks of yardage. So when you get 10 marked off against you, it's really hard to get that first down. You know, they talk about sacks being so important because it stops the drive. Well, it's exactly what a penalty does. The only difference between a penalty and a sack, of course, is sack increments the downs. Are you surprised that he accepted it? It would have been third down and long. Now it's second and 20 because he accepted the penalty. Yeah, I think usually on holding calls, you pretty much accept the, you know, the, those almost without question. But, yeah, I mean, it would have been interesting one less down to try to make the first, but pushing the back tens, okay. Matoa has just not been good passing the ball tonight. Look at this play. They botched the handoff, and luckily, the pitch play, they somehow got it back. The key word being botched. <laughs> the backward pass, right. nobody got it. That was dangerous. Now, now it's what? This is when you're in third in the country mile territory. Yeah. And again, without the, the aerial attack, you're in trouble. Now, let's see what they do. They've done a couple of max protect calls and two receivers downfield. That might not be a bad call. Again, if it's intercepted, no, maybe that's not so bad either. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a, a punt, punt, right? Uh, you're not going to get it on the ground. I just don't see that happening. A screen pass right. might not be a bad thing. Maybe Barrington over, he gets overzealous and tries to um, you know, rush the quarterback. I think if I'm Barrington, I, I wouldn't rush the quarterback too much here. Third and 28, got to get at least 20, even consider going for it. Another flag. So the flags are flying in the second quarter. Delay of game, yeah. is that what he said? Delay of game. That's not good, because you had an attorney to get that playoff. You know, partner, you can punt on third down if you want to. Yeah, what's longer than, yeah, you could. What's longer than a country mile? Now we got the police on the prowl over there. Third and 34, not a lot in the playbook for a third and 34. This is, you like know, a, this is like hook and ladder territory. Yeah, who is in that ambulance? Matoa, here comes the pressure. He hasn't been very good tonight, Parter, but he just doesn't have a lot of time to throw either. He's exactly right. He's got no time. I mean, if you're Glenbrook South, maybe you think about rolling him out and get, gaining some time that way. Uh, Barrington is a very, very tough defense. I, I do think, you know, kind of a shorter pass on the run so that you can get some yards after the catch is warranted. But, you know, Barrington is very, very stout defense. We knew that going in. And, and you know, Glenbrook South cannot let this game get away from them. Right now it's a two-score game. Barrington gets the ball and with three minutes to go. If they can score before the half, we're not going to say it's lights out, but it's a long way toward it. It's just hard to win football games when you consistently have to run the ball. 
from the length of the field to score. Partially blocked by the Broncos. I'm pretty amazed it got out of the this far. I thought he had totally shut down that punt. It's going from bad to worse right now for the Titans. Great field position for the Broncos as we stick with the action. 2.53 to go in well, the half. Well, I mean, midfield, I mean, it's not the greatest posi uh, field position. It's not so bad. I mean, that punt, fortunately, it wasn't blocked. It obviously got tipped. We're in the second quarter with 14-3 uh, to three in favor of the uh, Broncos. Piper hasn't had to do much. He has a long touchdown pass and he was stripped from behind. Well, this is the time to air it out now. They set up the screen. Look at that juke. Marish still on his feet with two unbelievable moves. Touchdown Barrington, touchdown Marouche, 20 to three. It took just one play, a screen over the middle. Gunberg South took the bait, went after the quarterback. There was almost nobody left to stop him. He didn't juke twice, he juked three times. The first one to get around the referee and then two times in a row to get around the defenders. Terrific run. It's early in the game, partner, but that might be the dagger. That one hurts if you're a Glenbrook South fan. Well, and there's, it's more than just the seven points there. It's like one play is all it took for them to score. And right. that's the old, if they were at the 50 yard line, the 80 yard line, didn't matter. One play, touchdown. And honestly, was it great tackling by Glenbrook South? No, they weren't playing with a head on a swivel as here's the extra point. Straight through the uprights as you would expect. Nothing less by their great kicker. Well, what the uh, defenders had to do, and of course they have to have, uh, like you said, their heads on a swivel. They had to keep him away from that far sideline. There was no help on the far sideline. Yeah. So they had to turn him back into the middle where he could possibly get caught right. from behind or something. But once he got around you know, to the left side of those defenders each time, that was it. Like I said, the third juke, which was really the first juke, he had to get around the referee. If he had continued going straight, the referee would have tackled him. We'll take a quick break. You're watching the Broncos against the Titans here on SBS. Nope, mute. Yeah. Before you know it, you'll know my name and how to pronounce it. You'll know the meaning of Kokun Ka. Before you know it, you'll call me son. You call me daughter. You call me brother. You call us sisters. Your family will make a difference in how America is perceived and what America stands for. And we invite you to welcome an exchange student like me to your home and your family. For over 70 years, AFS USA has. 21 to three, what a game for Matt Marouche, partner. He's already got two touchdown receptions. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, and I really like, uh, you know, Adore, whatever the word is, that play call, that, that short screen yeah. over the middle. He kind of he didn't even throw it hard, just kind of floated it to him. There's nobody anywhere near him. Parkinson on the kick. And Glenbrook South will let that go into the end zone as deciding to not go after his number one, not on the Max Preps roster. And uh, for Glenbrook South partner, it's time for the two minute offense. It's pass, 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 and try to get some points on the board. Well, this would be the time to try that, but you gotta be very, very careful because you don't want one of those passes to be intercepted and you get a pick six or yeah. Barrington has a ball inside like the 20. Uh, on the other hand, you can't just expect to run and run it downfield with just two minutes, minutes to go. So Glenbrook South, we'll see what kind of a passing offense they do have. Um, you hate to panic here, you got two minutes left, so don't panic, right? Wor worry about making the you know, adjustments at halftime and coming back later perhaps, but don't make a turnover here. First and 10 at their own 20. Another handoff, didn't get much. Canning has just been shut down most of the night. He had that big return and that nice first down run. Other than that, hasn't been a lot of Nate Canning tonight. Well, in the Barrington, you know that they looked at a lot of game film from last week and from the first time when they played them. And they, you know, they know how to make adjustments and they've obviously made them. The holding Glenbrook South to three points in the first half. Last time Glenbrook South had, what was it, 19 for the game? They gotta find a way to get it through the air. They run it outside and he's just thrown down. Wrestling style is on the carry from, from Cotton. Didn't do much with it. There's a timeout for Glenbrook South, curiously. With two minutes to go, third and five. I guess oh. they're trying to get the call, play call right. Oh, Barrington called time, not Glenbrook South. So we'll take another timeout. You're watching the Broncos against the Titans here at SBS.
Are you looking for some good food after a Fenwick football game? Then head on over to O'Sullivan's Public House. Located on Madison Street in Forest Park, O'Sullivan's Public House has daily drink specials alongside a year-round beer garden. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. O'Sullivan's PH offers dinner until 10 p.m. Even cooler, O'Sullivan's offers a late-night menu until 11.30 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. On the weeknights, O'Sullivan's has a late-night menu until 11 p.m. Third five, ball at the 25. They called timeout, did the Broncos as they're trying to preserve them and Glenbrook South has to get a first down or get out of bounds. Well, I like what- Preferably uh, get the first. Yeah, like what Barrington did, call timeout, right? Get an incomplete pass, get the ball back at midfield. You've got plenty of time to score yet again in the first half. Glenbrook South, you need a first down here. Pitch play out to the right. Hesitation move by Cotton, he didn't get much. I mean, you're down 18, another timeout called by the Broncos. We'll stick with the action. Right. You're down 18. I know you're inside your own 30, but I think you got to go for it because if you punt it back to the Broncos, they're probably going to score another touchdown. <laughs> well, you have a lot of confidence in the Bronco offense, and far be it for me to disagree with that, but absolutely, I would be punting. You cannot give the ball to the Broncos at the 30-yard line. Give it to them 70 yards away from the, the touchdown with two minutes to go, not 30 away. So I would I would be punting, but it is a, a tricky wind right now, and last punt almost got blocked. So they got to be careful if they punt it. They got to yeah. make sure the punt gets off. The reason I want to go for it too is if you get the first, keeps the clock running, and it minimizes the time for Barrington to come back. So let's say you get this first down, but you don't get another one. It wastes another minute. Barrington's got one timeout left. Well, yeah, yeah it's true. I mean, that would kill the clock if you get the first down. By the way, the text line's still open. Your favorite high school, college, or NFL memory. Text 330 957 7653 all FCC regulations do apply. I don't see the punter yet. Well, and if the wind is absolutely picking up. It's 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 a, a you know, the field is north and south, right? The wind is from the west. So it's a crosswind right now. I'm not sure how much that'll affect the punt. The last one was almost blocked. Let's see what they do. We we can't tell if they've got punt team in or an offense in yet. There are a couple of deep safeties for Barrington. Yeah. Pregnant Number 12 is their punter, they're indeed gonna punt. At least it looks like it. They only need two yards for the first. Don't even think of a fake. <laughs> Not a great punt. A lot of hang time though. Yeah, I think the wind got that. And it'll take a friendly Glenbrook South roll and ball will be placed. Just shy of the 42, we'll call it the 42 and a half yard line. So they gotta go 58 yards to score. And they've already done it twice with some long touchdowns. They've got some pl plenty of time to get there from here. But just one timeout left? Yeah, one timeout left. Remember, clock stops on a first down, though, so you don't necessarily have to spike it once you've gotten the first down. Perfect spot for some aerial show from Barrington here. I don't think in, in this case you need to run the ball. Just keep it in the air and see how far you can go. So it'll be first and 10 at the 42. Now, Gumberg South has to do a good job of keeping the players in front of them. They can't let anybody get behind you. If you gotta let them catch it, fine. Tackle them there. Piper. And he fakes the handoff with a great throw that time. Yeah, it was a laser right up the middle. 15 yard gain. Excellent pass completion. They're going to split the wide receivers again. Piper in the backfield. He's going to roll to the right. This time he'll run with it. Eyes the sideline and he gets there. Good job as he gets there quick enough to not get tackled by Devine. You got to give credit to Gumberg South on that one. There was nobody open downfield. Of course, Dan Devine was the <laughs> former head coach of the Green Bay <laughs> Packers. Did you know it was actually his idea to play Rudy in that final game? <laughs> no, I wouldn't have known that. And he almost sued TriStar Pictures <laughs> when he said when the, in the movie he doesn't let Rudy play until the players, you know, do that jersey thing. Second and four at the 36. It's a fake handoff by Piper. Maybe not a great decision. He's, he's going to be sacked. Well, in, as opposed to saying it wasn't a great decision, let's say it was really good defense by Glenbrook South.
me, Smalls. starters to Hall of Famers. O'Neill was regarded as one of the best in the league during that time. As impressive as he was during his peak, was it enough for him to be considered for the Basketball Hall of Fame? As good as he was as a pacer, the rest of his career was average at best and arrestable at worst, pun intended. He started in Portland for the 1996-97 season, where he played the next four seasons. These Portland teams made the playoffs each season he was there, and even made the conference finals back-to-back -back years in 99 and 2000. In 2000, they took the Lakers to seven games, losing 89-84 to in the historic game that featured the iconic Kobe Deshek alley-oop in the closing minutes of the game. By the way, Portland was up by more than 10 points in the game. It was a very successful run for Portland a run that O'Neal had little to nothing to do with. During his time with the Trailblazers, O'Neal never averaged over 13.5 minutes per game. His most impactful season came in 1998, where he averaged 4.5 points, 3.4 rebounds, and 1 block per game. As underwhelming as O'Neal's career was when he was with Portland, it's hard to place a ton of blame on him for his struggles. In a time where selecting a high school player was still considered a taboo move, he was a teenager playing with grown men. The center and forward positions were especially stacked for Portland, in a roster that featured Arvdaz Sabonis, Rasheed Wallace, Scotty Pippen, Detlef Schremp, and Brian Grant. Unless they're an instant generational talent, it's extremely hard for a young prospect to get playing time for an NBA team contending for a title. You even see this in today's NBA, with the Golden State Warriors still trying to figure out how to fit their younger prospects into the rotation. Hard to hold Jermaine's first four seasons against him. After the Pacers went into a mini-rebuild parting ways with veterans Mark Jackson, Rick Smith, Chris Mullen, and head coach Larry Bird, they traded for O'Neal in 2000. He was put into their starting unit and instantly made huge strides, posting career highs in every major statistical category other than field goal percentage, which makes sense because he went from taking three to four shots per game to 10 plus. 
He would average 12.8 points, 9.8 rebounds, and 2.8 blocks for the 2000-2001 season. His next six seasons would be what defined his stardom, as he would team up with future Hall of Famer Reggie Miller and future Defensive Player of the Year Ron Artest. But with an aging Reggie Miller and the unpredictable personality that was Ron Artest, O'Neal ultimately became the best player and most valuable player for the Pacers during this time. He averaged 20.4 points, 9.9 rebounds, 2.1 assists, and 2.4 blocks per game, shooting 45.9% from the field between 2001 to 2007. He also had 39.3 win shares, 25.7 defensive, 13.6 offensive, a plus-minus of 1.7, 1.0 defensive, and 0.8 offensive, and a player efficiency rating of 20.3 in those seasons. To put these stats in context, one player who puts up similar numbers to O'Neal in today's game is DeMontis Sabonis. While a much better passer than O'Neal ever was, and not quite the defender, Sabonis has 43.5 win shares, 25.8 offensive and 17.7 defensive, a plus-minus of 2.3, 1.3 offensive and 0.9 defensive, and a player efficiency rating of 19.3. Sabonis just recently finished his seventh season. O'Neal's success on the court translated to the success of the team. The Pacers would win 312 games to 262 games lost and make the playoffs five out of six possible seasons from 2001 to 2002 to 2006 and 07. His play would get him into six straight All-Star games, the 2001 to 2002 Most Improved Player Award, and three All-NBA teams. His best season was in 2003 to 2004, where he averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds, and 2.6 blocks. He started 78 games that season, made second-team All-NBA, and finished third in MVP voting. The Pacers would go 61-21 to that year and make it to the conference finals where they lost in six games to the 2004 NBA champion Detroit Pistons. By 2004, O'Neal was certainly in the conversation with the best big men in the league. At that time, that conversation included players like Shaquille O'Neal, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and Dirk Nowitzki, four players with Hall of Fame resumes, if they're not in already. But it would be the 2004-05 season that would define O'Neal's career, and not in the way anyone would have hoped. The Pacers started off the season hot with a 7-2 start, which would have projected them to finish the season 64-18, three wins better than the last season of 61-21. Then, in a game against the Pistons on November 19, 2004, it all came to a crashing halt. The Pacers had a commanding 97-82 lead over their division rival in the closing minute of the road game in Detroit. After a hard fall at the rim on Ben Wallace by Ron Artest, an enraged Wallace came after Artest. Wallace had to be held back by teammates and security for multiple minutes, while Artest was moved by the scoring table, where he started to lay down. As Artest lay down on the scoring table, a fan threw a drink at him, which instigated a brawl that caused Artest and teammate Steven Jackson to run into the stands and throw punches at the fan. This incident was ultimately dubbed Malice at the Palace, a notorious brawl that transcended basketball and changed the landscape of the NBA forever. As some fans eventually started to run onto the court, O'Neal punched a man in the jaw who was running at him. He was subsequently charged with assault and battery for his role in the incident and was sentenced to a year of community service. He was initially suspended 25 games for the incident, but an appeal knocked that down to 15 games. Though O'Neal had a limited slash non-instigatory role in the Males at the Palace, it certainly left a black eye on his legacy as an NBA player. Not something that bodes well for a Hall of Fame case. Once O'Neal got back from a suspension in December of 2004, he was never really the same player. On top of the suspension, he had to miss multiple games during that season with a lingering shoulder injury. He finished that season with 44 games played, and the Pacers finished with a 44-38 record. After beating the Celtics in the first round, they were ironically bounced in the semifinals by the Pistons. While Neal was able to make the All-Star team for three straight seasons following the Males at the Palace, his play and ability to stay on the floor started to seriously decline. In his final full season with Indiana in 2007-08, he played in 42 games, starting in 34 of them. He averaged 13.6 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 2.1 blocks in just 28 7 minutes per game, all sizable drops for the numbers he put up in his prime. 2007-08 was the first season he wouldn't make the All-Star team since 2000-2001, and he wouldn't make any more of them for the rest of his career. He was traded to the Raptors in the offseason 2008. 
By the 2008 All-Star break, O'Neal had missed nearly a quarter of the season and had lost his starting spot to up-and-coming center, Andre Bargnani. He would be traded to the Heat later that season and would finish his 41 games in Toronto, averaging 13.5 points, 7 rebounds, and 2 blocks. His 2009-10 season in Miami would be his last decent season in terms of his health and productivity. He would play 70 games, averaging 13.6 points, 6.9 rebounds, and 1.4 blocks while playing 28.4 minutes per game. A variety of injuries would further plague him for the rest of his career after that season. He played with the Celtics, Suns, and Warriors up until his final season in 2013-14. From 2010 to 2014, he would play 148 games, 51 games started, posting averages of 7.1 points, 5.1 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks. For the second half of his career, you could argue O'Neal was nothing more than a role player. Despite the late bloom and sour ending of his career, how did O'Neal compare to the other big man superstars of his generation during his prime? Remember, the Hall of Fame is voted by the sports writers. From 2001 to 2007, the top tier power forwards and centers were Shaquille O'Neal, Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, and Dirk Nowitzki. Here's how O'Neal's stats match up against theirs as you see the graphic here. From 2002 to 2007, Jermaine O'Neal shot almost 46% from the field, three-point percentage not great at 18.4 and 20.4 points per game, among other notable statistics. Dirk Nowitzki, much better, 24.6 points, two-point percentage of 49.6, efficient field goal percentage of 51.3. Kevin Garnett, more in points per game, two-point percentage is better at 50.5, efficient field goal percentage 50.1, free throw percentage much better at 80%. Tim Duncan, 2002 to 2007. Surprisingly, not that much more points per game than Jermaine O'Neal. 21.7 points, 50.8 field goal percentage, efficient field goal percentage of 50.9, total rebounds of 11.8. And Shaquille O'Neal, absolutely dominant. 24.1 points, efficient field goal percentage. This is insane. 58.4, 2.2 blocks. Free and a field goal percentage of 58.4. How bad was his free throw percentage? Pretty darn bad, 51.5. While each of those player stats are clearly a bit superior to O'Neal's, it's surprising to see how close he comes up to matching up with them. Shaq and Tim Duncan are top 10 players in the history of the NBA, and Dirk and KG are also considered amongst the best this league has ever seen. O'Neal is second in blocks amongst them with 2.4, just under Duncan's 2.5. The big difference between O'Neal and these four players was sustainability and team success. During this window, Shaq won three of his four NBA titles, two with the Lakers, one with the Heat. Duncan won three of his five titles. Dirk and KG would go on to win a title later in their careers. Also, O'Neal's only real case for the Hall of Fame is his six All-Star seasons. Shaq had an eight-year prime going into the 2001 season. Duncan won a championship in 1999, and he was able to develop himself into a championship-level contributor even when he passed his prime, making multiple all-star, all-NBA, and all-defensive teams when he was 35-plus years old. KG Blossom had an all-star five years prior to 2001 and was an all-star for five of his next six seasons in Boston after getting traded by Minnesota in the 2007 offseason. Dirk was just entering his prime around the same time O'Neal was and was able to extend it nearly another decade. To be fair, those four are some of the greatest to ever play the game. So just because O'Neal's career didn't play out the same as theirs doesn't mean he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. Some of the center slash power forward tier two and tier three stars during that time were Ben Wallace, Chris Webber, and Elton Brand. Here's how O'Neal's numbers measure against them. Jermaine O'Neal, once again, 20.4 points per game, efficient field percentage. This is where it kind of hurts him. It's only at 46%, so he wasn't that efficient of a player. Blocks, excellent, 2.4, and then fouls per game, 3.5. For Elton Brand, 20.4 points per game, efficient field goal percentage. It's better than Jermaine O'Neal, 51.5. Free throw percentage, it's still better, 75.2, whereas Jermaine O'Neal was 73.5. How about Chris Webber? Actually, Chris averaged less points per game than Jermaine O'Neal, 19.6. Player fouls, 3. Free throw percentage, 71. Total rebounds, 9.3. So Jermaine O'Neal actually had more rebounds uh, than Chris Webber. For Ben Wallace, not a great offensive player by any stretch of the imagination. Only 7.9 points per game. But here's what hurts Jermaine O'Neal again. 47 efficient field goal percentage to just 46 for, for Jermaine. 
Ben Wallace stands out because he had little to no offensive game. He was, however, one of the most prominent centers in the league during that time frame. He was maybe the best defensive center in the league, making every all-defensive team during that stretch with four Defensive Player of the Year awards. He also made five All-NBA teams and was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. The more apt comparisons to O'Neal would be Chris Webber and Elk Brand. All three have similar stats during this time. 2010 players who thrived in the post, pick and roll and mid-range. Webber, who's now a Hall of Famer, had the better career of the three. Like O'Neal, he struggled to find his place early in his career, bouncing from the Warriors to the Bullets slash Wizards before ultimately landing with the Kings. But despite the situation, Webber still managed to put up all-star level numbers. From 1993 to 2001, he averaged 21.8 points, 10.2 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.8 blocks, and 1.5 steals, shooting 50% from the field. He was also a couple questionable calls away from making the finals. Elton Brand, who's not in the Hall of Fame, has the most similar career arc to O'Neal. He basically had an eight-year apex from his rookie year in 1999 to 2000 to 2006 to 07. A couple games into the 2007-08 season, he tore his Achilles and was never quite the same player after that. He was an effective role player for the next five to six seasons, but not the star that he once was. He was, in essence, the same dilemma as O'Neal when it comes to making a Hall of Fame case. Was he dominant for a long enough time to justify him being inducted? After breaking his career down in full, it's time to answer the big question. Does Jermaine O'Neal belong in the Basketball Hall of Fame? To answer a question with a question... Would the Basketball Hall of Fame take you? Twenty-one to three. What else can you say but absolute dominance by the Barrington Broncos in that first half? Marouche with a couple of touchdowns. He dropped the wide open pass, so it could be worse than 21 to three, but uh, that's where we stand right now. Besides the excellent kick of 49 yarder by Pagnert, it's really all Broncos right now. Well, and that's the thing, you know, you can't rely on 49 yard kicks to get back in games. You gotta get it another way. You know, a stronger running attack, you know, but you have some offense through the air, but you are so right. Barrington is just doing a great job crushing Glenbrook South's rushing offense. And at the same time, because of those two long touchdown drive or scores, you know, that's a 21 to three game. So at this rate, you know, I always say it's what gonna be 42 to six now is what we're looking at. And that might not be too far from it. Barrington is really unstoppable on the ground. And as they showed, Near the end of the first half, they're unstoppable in the air. It's going to take a lot for Glenbrook South to get back in this partner. We haven't seen a lot from Matoa throwing the ball tonight. Can he get them three touchdowns at this point? You got to score three touchdowns and hold Barrington to a field goal going into overtime. Really, the only way for Glenbrook South to win this game is three touchdowns, hold Barrington to a field goal or less. And, and that's exactly right. And how are you going to get those three touchdowns where it's going to come from? It's clearly not coming from the ground. So I think if I'm Glenbrook South, as much as I want to run, you know, you want to say don't panic in the second half. But I think you're going to have to put the ball up in the air and see what you can do, preferably with the wind. But um, you got to risk it. I mean, if you don't, if you don't win here, you are out. It's not like you want to, you know, lose by a touchdown or two touchdowns here. You need to win it to get yeah, to the next so game. Like, you don't want to pass the ball, but if you throw a pick six, it becomes 28 to three. Well, we're still down anyways. We got to win this game to play next Friday or next Saturday. So we got to just think season's on the line. It's single elimination. There's no more regular season. Everybody's 0-0, but if you lose and go 0-1, that's it. Your season's over. Right. Although I do think that the, the strength is they're running. If they could find a way to just execute that better, you know, there is a whole half of football to go. Um, you know, with just throwing it nilly-willy and, you know, downfield and hope for, you know, luck. That's not going to happen either. You have to have, a, you know, something that you know will work, and you have to run a lot of that. But, you know, Barrington has just shut down everything, including that, that strong running game that they do have. If Barrington scores again, so they will kick off in the second half to the Titans. If Barrington scores again to make it 28-3, to do you start subbing out some of the starters to get them ready for next week? Well, I, I don't know if subbing out starters is the way I would look at it, but I would, I, I'm totally agreeing that I think you would sprinkle in some backups here, there, and elsewhere to make sure they're prepared and ready to go in, when and if they are needed. I mean, nothing like, you know, your, your star at some position, then he goes down and the guy who's ready to take a spot doesn't know what to do or where to go. So, yeah, sprinkling in some backup players would absolutely be a, a, what the doctor would prescribe here in the second half. And it's a very cold second half here. You know, I was uh, in the yard today. Like It felt like 80 degrees when I was mowing the, the, the leaves, you know, mulching them. Then, like, 4 o'clock, the front came by, and I had to put, like, a sweater on. Here I am. I finally gave up and put my hood on tonight. It's uh, We're on top of the press box. The wind is really strong from the west. So on the field, you know that there's a, a pretty good side wind. 
Although this stadium here is a nice barrier to some of the wind on the, on the, on the field itself, but it's a windy night, chilly. And the, we just got done hearing the band. The band was terrific. Uh, they were perfectly in precision. I mean, the band does a great job here at Barrington. I'm quite impressed. So kicking off will be Parkinson, Glenbrook South. They're down 18. They have not led all night. The closest it was to winning this game for them, it was 7-3. to three. And he'll return it at the one-yard line. He finally gets a chance to. And Cotton's going to be driven out of bounds. He did not get to the 20. He decided to return it. If he had let it go into the end zone, it would have gone right to the 20. Yeah, They're going to spot one, the 19. Right, he would have had one more yard. I think he, you know, the whole team probably enjoyed having a chance to run it back. But you know, I, I'm also going to attribute that to you know, Barrington didn't kick it into the end zone only because it's a cold day and you know didn't maybe entirely warm up for the second half kickoff. Wood might have taken that. Yeah, that could be. Got to go 81 yards. Matoa's going to throw. It should have been picked. It was right to him. That's just a, a flat-out drop on the pick attempt by Brooks Howard. Right through his hands. Um, but that's what Gumberg South has to be concerned about. I, I like that they made an adjustment to go ahead and try to air the ball out a little bit. I don't think that they can do that long term, but you almost see why they don't pass much at all <laughs> right through the defender's hands. He, he's got kind of an awkward drop back. It's not really three straight steps backward. He kind of leans to the right. He's got that awkward release, kind of like Tim Tebow-esque. <laughs> it's just harder to get these balls out quickly for him. Well, I think if I was compared to Tim, De Tim Tebow, I would be uh, happy with that. Well, Tim Tebow had a nice drop back. Matoa's got to work on that. Matoa out to the right. He's got a wide open man. That's right on target to Cotton. We'll see if they do a no huddle look. They will. What a great catch. Well, it's a nice catch, but he was wide open as well. Tyrone Cotton, man, he's done everything tonight. Make tackles, return kicks. We talked a lot about 30, you know, 34 in, in, in Nate Canning, but really Tyrone Cotton has become Nate Canning tonight. Well, they, you, you talked about it was Cotton's job and Canning took it over, right. and Canning, besides a couple of plays, he has just been a non-factor tonight. Handoff up the middle. Good start on that first down play. I, I like the play call, go up the middle again, keep the defense in the middle so they can go wide later or pass it. I'm if pretty impressed. I was impressed with that last pass for the first down. If Glenbrook South scores a touchdown on this drive, do you consider an onside kick to minimize the possessions and try to steal a possession back? A yeah, great question, but no, I'd kick it deep and hope that I get, you know, win the, the field position battle. Short pass to Cotton. He's tough to bring down. He'll get the first down. And Tyrone Cotton, if Glenbrook South has any chance of advancing to the second round. It looks like they're going to put the ball in his hands. Oh, I like that idea, though. And if, if, if I knew they had this kind of a passing attack, maybe we would have been saying, uh, use it earlier. So let's see if they can keep this up. But, you know, Barrington maybe hasn't seen this either on film, and so this is new to them. Remember, maybe now yeah. that they see Cotton can catch the ball, they'll defend him differently. Remember, you're down three scores, so a, a field goal still helps you. If it's more than fourth and five and you get inside the 25, with the kicker they have, you definitely have to consider the field goal. But meanwhile, they, they need another 25 yards to consider it. What a great play, he faked out everybody. And a little fullback dive to, to the 15 yard line as Glenbrook South in business now. Well, Glenbrook South found two things that work, right? That the quick opener right up the middle, right? And then those passes to Cotton, they're right downfield. Now they got to close it off and get the score. They can't just die in the red zone here, right? But if they do get that touchdown, remember that three score lead that Barrington had becomes two scores and really plenty of time to go. It was handed off that time to Siegel and what a run that was. And I like the adjustments the coaches made. Another one is, is Gumbrick South is hurrying up now, faster pace. Misdirection play and Canning didn't get much. And remember in high school, the quarterbacks do not have headsets. So the quarterback in Matoa has to go to the bench and talk to his new head coach. They had a coaching change in the off season. See what coach Schoenwetter tells his young quarterback to do on this play. Matoa also plays middle linebacker for the uh, Glenbrook South Titans. 
Second and nine at the 14, obviously four down territory unless you lose yardage. But you gotta get to fourth and three or better if you can to consider going for it. Well, I think Umbrook South is sinking end zone. Matoa in the pocket, short oh. pass, terrible pass. Yeah, if, if that's another one of those plays. Though. If it connects, it's not going for very far, but you hit it on the head. It was low and inside toward the defender. If you're going to miss that pass so nobody else can get it, you need to miss on the other side of the back. So the back turned one way, the ball was on the other, too low, too impossible to catch. Third and nine at the 14. I like that they tried to air it out, though. You're definitely within range for a field goal, so if you don't get any more yards, you can definitely kick the field goal to go down 15. It'll be interesting to see if that's the call that Glenbrook South makes, right? If you get more than five yards, they're probably gonna go for it. Little play action for Matoa. He's got an open man, another bad pass. Again, way behind him. You know, you need to throw to the touchdown side of the player rather than behind him and it went behind him as if he yeah. was running and out it just uh, it didn't it look like right. a fade route it, it just wasn't a good ball if it was a good ball that's a completion yeah what I'm also wondering is did the wind affect that because the wind is pushing yeah. the ball further out that right. way which would make it look like it did what it did so it could be that it was highly affected by the crosswind either way that ball's got to come out quicker and it's got to be on target yeah and here's your answer on fourth and nine and what they're going to do yeah I'm not I'm not happy with this Bob I would have kicked the field goal you're down by three scores regardless but they're thinking touchdown all the way Matoa with a clean pocket over the end zone, touchdown, tie. oh, he dropped it. Oh, no. Oh, he's gonna think about that in the morning for sure. And actually, they switched quarterbacks. They did not use Matoa. It was a pass that time by Andrew Bonvecchio, and Bonvecchio with an absolute rocket to the end zone, it was just dropped. I'm just not sure I would have changed quarterbacks at that point in time on the drive. If you think that that's the better quarterback, it put him in like earlier. like he is. Was he there the whole time? No, I didn't not notice. 84. Yeah, they put 84 in. But only on that play. Right. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure that I would have selected then to put him in Well, to it was be the right on target. It was just a clean drop. If you think he's the right quarterback to lead your team on fourth and nine, he's the right quarterback to lead your team on every down. Well... Sometimes you get lightning in a bottle as that's a tackle past the, the first well, down. Well, and it could be you have a certain couple, two or three or 10 plays assigned to him, and that, that was, okay, this is the play that you run, let's run it. But it, it kind of worked, it just got dropped. Kind of worked, it absolutely worked. It's just yeah. butterfingers on the <laughs> catch attempt. You mean the, the candy bar we're passing out on Halloween? Don't hand, uh, don't, don't give him a butterfingers on Halloween. It's gonna remember <laughs> that drop he had in the playoffs. That's a game changer, partner. It would have been 21 to 10 if he catches that. It is a game changer, absolutely. Stiff arm action. Meanwhile, this guy Fitzgerald, he's just impossible to bring down right now. Well, well what we have to do is remember, it kind of like missing an extra point. In this case, it's kind of like remembering missing a touchdown. So add seven more points to Glenbrook South's total later at the end of the game and see if it, how much it really did matter. Because I don't think uh, Barrington is going to run different plays up by 11 you know, versus up by 18. So they switch quarterbacks to Bonvecchio. It was a beautiful pass by Bonvecchio, but it was dropped. Meanwhile, Piper in the offense. We, we're not doing live stats tonight, Parter, but I would be shocked if Piper has passed it more than five times tonight. Another handoff to Jackson. He's got a chance to break it. And he's tackled from behind. He'll get to the 25 and another backbreaker against Glenbrook South, but look. They needed to catch that touchdown pass. That might have been their last gasp on that fourth down play. Well, and it's more than the seven points. It's the, the you, you know, it changes your whole the morale of the team. You know, that goes now, you, now you're down 11. You just scored on the first drive. Now Barrington gets the ball. You stuff that, you get the ball back. And, but now here, it's almost like, the, you, you know, you just can't stop the snowball rolling down the hill. And right now, that hill is real steep. Must be nice for Piper, it reminds me of the NFC Championship game where Jimmy Garoppolo had to throw it less than 10, 10 times. Mostert had over 200 yards rushing that night, that day. Well, it's windy and chilly, maybe not as wet anymore, but keep running, it works. A Little bit of a Le'Veon Bell type of run that time by Fitzgerald, and Piper just gonna run a little clock, no need to rush it. Some more very favorable comparisons, Le'Veon Bell. Jake Cooper, 
gain of one on the play. Do you think if he had just stayed with the Steelers and not had that contract holdout, he would have been a Hall of Famer? Uh, well, I think that's steep. I mean, he could end up like Russell Wilson, right? But, you know, headed there, but just not make it. But he, I think, would have absolutely had a much, much, much better career. I mean, that's a, a very astute comment. Second and nine to 27. You need eh, another five yards to consider a field goal, but uh, Parkinson's got a boot. Nobody open again. Rolls outside the pocket. Piper to the sideline. What a pass. Was he inbounds? And he dropped it. They're saying that it hit the ground, I think, but definitely not a catch. He what had plenty of time. By Piper. Sorry? What a nice pass by Piper. Oh, yeah, it was. And the receiver's going deep, obviously, into the corner, so he's looking for an over-the-shoulder type of catch. But then the quarterback rolled out right, and then he came back to the quarterback, and it was almost a perfect play. So third nine, partner, you're up by 18. The field goal, it helps you a little bit, but you're still only up three scores. So do you want to be aggressive and go for it on fourth down? Do you consider punting? Or do you consider going for the field goal if you can't get any positive yardage here? Well, I think in their case, they're going to go for it no matter what. They proved that at the end of the first half, right? They're close enough that whether they get five yards here or not, they're going to go for it. And off to Fitzgerald. Hesitation move. He dives. They he might be a half yard it. short. They're, yeah, they're marking him short. But I like the run call up the middle again. That's what does work. It's kind of like, let's go back yeah. to the old, uh, old standard. Now it's time for the uh, Jalen Hurts tush-push play. Yes. <laughs> They are so good at it, partner. The Eagles were running the tush push. They had fourth and one at their own 28, and they still converted it. Yep. Now they call it the brotherly shove. It's great. <laughs> I am, well, we'll talk about that We'll talk play. about it after this play. Yeah. And off the, no, nope, it's a fake. It. Piper with it, and, and that he is didn't not going to get it. Flattened. If he had handed it off to Fitzgerald, it looked like he was going to get it, so either Interesting play goals by Sanchez or bad reads on the option by uh, by paper, well, and it's yeah, leading to problems for the Broncos. Yeah, I don't know if those are read plays. I think they're you know designed fakes, right? But yeah, if he read it, obviously should have gone up the middle with it. And I don't know why you would have done anything else but go up the middle on fourth and a quarter inch. Right, but they haven't stopped Fitzgerald all night. Yeah, I, I, I would have gone up the middle. Sanchez has done that a couple of times in running situations tonight where he went ahead and right. you know did something different like a pass. I guess you're up 18. You feel confident that they can't go down the field with Mateo at quarterback. Well, it's also you, you got to keep the defense honest. If you constantly go up the middle in that situation, you're not going to get much, right? But if you also pass and roll out and do other things. So they indeed have made a quarterback change, and why not? He was brilliant on that first pass he threw. I, I'm totally on board with changing the quarterbacks. You know, it's, it's no slam on Mateo, right? But I, I think seeing somebody different is a real wise move. And, and you kind of applaud Glenbrook South for trying something different. It's not like they're 9-0, and right? So if you're 4-5, and five, maybe a quarterback change isn't such a bad There's, idea. There's always a reason that you've lost games, whether your offensive line is bad, your quarterback is not performing, your defensive line is not performing. Or and flags. <laughs> yeah, flags don't help either. Another handoff. He's done well too today. I mean, they have guys stepping up. We talked a lot about Nate Canning, but and I thought that was 30, but they say that Canning actually ran it. Canning is 34. Starting to get colder here at uh, Barrington Community Stadium. Yeah, with the with the chilly west wind, which it may have affected the pass down at the other end of the goal line. I, I mean, I just find it hard to believe he was that inaccurate. I think the wind just took it and you know, pushed it off the field. Well, there was that little uh, swing pass that he was inaccurate on. Bob right. Vecchio hands it off. Well, and you know, maybe that's the reason for the coaching change at quarterback, right? The Those two change? passes. The, the quarterback well, the, change. The, well, quarterback change that the coach made. The so, coaching so, so. made a change, right. But So they put in a, a different quarterback on those two kind of wild throws. Might be like, well, just not your night tonight. Can, can you make a coaching change during the game? Can the GM fire the coach during the game? Yeah, only if you're uh, Jimmy Jones or something. Jimmy Jones. Jerry Jones? Dallas? Yeah, you said yeah, Jimmy Jerry Jones. Jones. Oh, Jimmy Johnson, Jerry Jones. Oh, uh -oh. Thinking, I think you're hungry. I think you're thinking of a Jimmy John sandwich right now. <laughs> First and 10 of the 37th. Bon Vecchio, he's got a man open. That wasn't a good pass either. Yeah, I'm not so sure how open he was. We'll say he was NFL open. <laughs> Siegel, the intended target. There's usually a reason he's the backup, right? But then you have some interesting situations, undrafted guys that go in, that get the job done, that win the job. Jake DeLome, Tony Romo, obviously the Kurt Warner story. Yeah, I don't know about any local guys that might have done that from Shepherd University, but 
But anyway, we're going to find out on Sunday night. Yeah, we'll know a lot more. I hope it works out for him. It just screams out Caleb Haney to me. Ever, oh, after, man. after Caleb Haney, I just I can't give quarterbacks like that the benefit of the doubt anymore. Brock Purdy's looked good, but even the last two weeks, he hasn't been very good either. Second and 10 at the 37, one in the backfield. and I think they just called a flag on you. <laughs> the flag on the well, field. What? Brock has not been good the last two weeks. Did you think he was good? He is in good. His last game? He that is That terrible good. pick against the Vikings on Monday Night Football? And Caleb Haney? Caleb Haney was not good. He was good that one game. Brock Purdy has not been good the last two weeks. He's been very good overall, but he has not been good the last two weeks. And he might not play this week because uh, he's in concussion protocol. Purdy? Yeah. That's a shame. It's not looking, uh, it's, it's looking pr pretty bad for him. That's your first one today. Right, yeah. Good, I like it. I did a lot during the Mount Carmel game, but uh, they, they weren't fans of him. They probably chatted up a, a reason not to do him. Second and 15 <laughs> at the 32. Look at that. They just grabbed the jersey. And, uh, uh oh, we got something going on yeah, in midfield right now. Yeah, maybe a holding penalty on that block. Probably just as well to let it go. I, I'm guessing it was out of the frame of the, uh, of the camera on that. But downfield on the left, there was some extracurricular activity after the whistle that wasn't called. And I'm, I'm going to say wisely not called. What's the sense? Yeah, it was Cole Slatter getting into it with Joe Paul. And he spells it just J-O. Third and 11, you're down 18, partner, but you gotta get at least five yards to consider going for it. Bonvecchio in the pocket, over the middle, and somehow made that catch. Beautiful pass by Bonvecchio, even better catch by Sherman. Well, First I, and 10 for GBS. Well, I'm sold. Of course, my data points are slight, and I don't see them in practice, but I, I'm sold that this quarterback, I like his downfield passing. It's generally accurate. He's a big guy, right? And it, you still haven't lost anything on your running game, have you? I mean, he's just a different quarterback. So I like this change. But Glenbrook South doing the right thing, making halftime adjustments. As, as it, you know, it, it's not like you can just keep doing the same thing and think something different is going to be the outcome. Just wonder why he wasn't playing at the beginning of the game. High, was it picked off? No, it hit the ground, but it was right through the receiver's hands. You can't blame that on the quarterback. You got to catch that. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too high. Yeah. Very fortunate it wasn't picked off. Yeah. Second and 10 at the 47, 327 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, that's always tough when the quarterback, especially second string comes in, throws an interception, but it's not his fault. It bounces right off the receiver's hands, bounces up, hits a helmet, something. <laughs> like that crazy play, uh, yeah. the home opener against the Lions, it was a perfect ball by Mahomes and Cardarius Tony just flat out dropped it, went into the defensive <laughs> back's hands for a pick six. Second and 10 at the 47, two in the backfield. Clean pocket for Bonvecchio, right on target. First and 10 for GBS, and they're driving right now, Bob. Yeah, I'm not in a position to critique this guy, but I would like to see him look one way and pass the other. He's staring down the receiver, but I think I will say that's next level. Right now, work on completing the pass, but I think if he could look one way and pass the other, those receivers will end up looking a little bit even more open. But I like his uh, throwing. I think the quarterback change is a very positive one. If you're just joining us, Bon Vecchio did not start. He's in the pocket again. He scans the field right on target again, right at the sticks. First and 10 for GBS. They had a touchdown, it was dropped. Let's see if they can score on this drive. Earlier in the game at the warmups, we were watching the three quarterbacks for Glenbrook South synchron, you know, they were warming up in synchronous fashion. You know, they would take three step, five step, seven step drops, turn the same time, same way, same exact footwork, very precise. Two in the backfield, two wide receiver set. And it's a handoff up the middle. They are really good at those fakes. As they're trying to fake out the Broncos. It's, and good, it's bo good ball control. Well, again, well coached. And they know that their defense is struggling trying to tackle Fitzgerald. So they're just going to take as much time off that clock and try to minimize the possessions for the Broncos. Isn't that the Lovey Smith School of Clock Management? No, that's Andy Reid. <laughs> Lovey Smith was good with clock management. Andy Reid was not. Andy <laughs> oh, Reid hello. is not. Uh oh. Even he would admit that. Remember that Super Bowl against the Patriots? Second and six. Bon Vecchio. Not a good pass. Almost picked off. Yeah, another one. His intended target that time was Landon Hooten. 
I mean, Glenburg South de definitely is, is doing the right thing, passing the ball downfield, but they are t using a lot of the clock. There's only two minutes left to go in the third, so they it, they need to score and get the, you know hurry up and get the ball back again because you know right. Barrington could eat up a lot of clock with their running game against them. But this has been very encouraging for Glenbrook South. This drive, unfortunately, it's taking almost the whole entire third quarter to get downfield. It, it almost seems like if they get six here and the extra point, they're almost certainly going to do the onside kick. They're hurrying up to the line at least. Two in the backfield. And another handoff up the middle. They're very successful with that. Yeah, they're in a little bit of trouble here. They're fourth and three. You would expect them to run, and Barrington's going to know they're going to run. So you got to be careful, and whatever you do, you got to make it. So if you're Glenbrook South, I think you keep it on the ground to go around end, but now you need your running game for this play. They're going to sub in Alejandro Casas. Fourth and two at the 14. They're going to go call. for it. One in motion. That's Canning. They run it off the right nope. side. I don't think he got nope. it. He did not. No, he needed to dive into the middle. Instead, he took one extra step to the outside, and that's where the Barrington tacklers were waiting. That was a tough, tough call. Kind of a, you know, we talk about game-changing plays. That was one of them right there, fourth and two. They were driving the whole way, and then came up empty. Now just a minute 22 to go before the fourth quarter. Mm, that's a shame that that drive stalled. What a great job by the backup quarterback with making you know, all those 10-yard you know, completions to move the ball. Yeah, just didn't make the throws at the end, but... Uh... Not his fault, just really good play by Barrington. Well, ironically, it was a ground game that let him down. They ran it the last two times, right? And, and they did not run into Canning on that play either. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Well, Barrington now has the ball, and the uh, you know, clock is absolutely in their favor. And whatever you do, do not turn the ball over. Well, we haven't seen a turnover yet from Barrington, so there's no reason to think that that's going to happen, right? The broadcaster jinx. Oh, okay, then it might. <laughs> First and 10 at their own 14. Hand off to Fitzgerald, he takes his time, he's so patient, he's still on his feet. First and 10 for number 12. Yeah, and you said it, they just can't stop him. There's just no answer for him. So the clock stops because he goes out of bounds, but the sticks move. Honestly, the only guy they've been able to stop is Papert on those fake handoff quarterback sneak plays. Well, and some of those he rolls out and it's still danger, danger, Will Robinson. They're going to run a three wide receiver set, one tight end. Hand off. Fitzgerald again. Look at this. He's still on his feet. He, he broke through two tacklers. Incredible. The football gods are not on Glenbrook South's night tonight, but they're also not doing a good job tackling either. Well, yeah, they're down to 18 going into the fourth quarter. This is not close enough. They had their opportunities, partner. They had the touchdown. They dropped it. They had another opportunity there, fourth and two. There's part of me that says this is a major success, you know, only giving up 21 points through three quarters. Right, it's but they should be putting points on that board. They need to score. This honestly could be a 21 to 17 game. Yeah, the, the, the defense has to walk away and say, you know, well, we kind of sort of did our job here. And off. Even Jackson's tough to bring down. Yeah, it's a lot of yards on that first down gain. So again, if I'm Barrington, just keep it on the ground. Just, just keep it on the ground. Clock runs, you get yards, you're going to get first downs. Don't pass. You risk a interception. Of course, the two of the three scores were very long pass plays. So if, if you're head coach Joe Sanchez, do you like the effort you've seen from your young men tonight or do you see something that they need to improve on going into their next playoff well game? yeah a great question right coaches always find stuff to improve upon so i mean he's, he's going to go both routes he's going to say I'm, I'm impressed with what you did you, you did great you played with your hearts you tried real hard glumber south's harder than they look but these things we need to do better for next time hand off to jackson it's probably in every every aspect of the game. He's probably saying, you know, Glenbrook South outplayed us on the special teams for this and that reason, right? Um, the running plays, I think we could have been more successful if we did blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, the passing plays, we would have been more successful if we did these other couple of things. So, you know. but nonetheless, it's been a very, very strong performance for Barrington so far. So well, when, we'll you, when you have a coach's mind like that, you know all the different things that need to change. We'll take a break. You're watching SBS, the broadcasting network for everyone.
Sports Broadcast Solutions is a broadcasting network for everyone. SBS offers live telecasts on channel 59.3, YouTube, or Twitch. We include pre and... No, no. You got to get play-by-play up. No. Got to scroll up. There you go. And he didn't mute it at all. Back to the action. It's 21 to 3. Third and two at the 46. And it's a handoff off the right side. First and 10 for the Barrington Broncos as the clock will stop at 11.54. Yeah, again, it's too early to say backbreaking, but you're down by 18, so I don't know if there's any one backbreaking play, but that first down, you know, now you got four more downs, more clock, and two minutes closer to the end of the game every time you get the first down. So Glenbrook South needed to stop right then, and Barrington did the right thing, just ran right the, up the middle. First and 10, ball placed at the 42. Yeah, I like this where the receivers are split very, very wide again, so there's fewer bo tacklers in the box. Handoff off the left side. Who else but Fitzgerald? He's still on his He's feet. Gone. He eyes the goal line. Touchdown, Dylan Fitzgerald. And that will effectively be the dagger on a postseason victory for Barrington tonight. Well, it, yeah, we're writing them off early in the fourth quarter on that run, right? All the way, it's a great formation. We talked about that where the receivers are split very, very, very wide. So there's fewer people in the middle to stop the run. They went wide and he had some downfield blocking. You know, one juke later, he's in the end zone. Great run, great, great play call. And you can also run passes out of that formation. So I like it. So Fitzgerald with two touchdowns, two rushing, Marouche with Two receiving touchdowns. Piper just didn't have to do a lot today is the extra point for Parkinson. And it's good. Yeah, it was good. A little low, kind of a flat kick, knuckleball, but it was good. Again, you probably attribute that to maybe not as warm as he could be. We'll take another break. You're watching the Broncos against the Titans here on SBS. Isn't that putting the cart before the horse? Yep. You're not supposed to do that. Nowadays, you have to, especially in the housing market, where you need to get a mortgage before you find the house. That's why with the Get Committed program from Compass Mortgage, you'll have a fully underwritten loan commitment that stands out even amongst cash offers. Not to mention, once you find the perfect home, you could close. 28 to three, Dylan Fitzgerald. It's gonna be interesting who we decide for the post game show. Those two jukes by Marouche, I think I'd have to pick him for the post game show. Oh, I, I, I think that'd be awesome to hear from Marouche on, on those catches he's made. I, I mean, it'd just be awesome to hear from him. You know, what did you see? Well, it'll be up to Nolan over there to ask him those questions, right? Not me. Or it might be you, right? Inside the 10, GBS trying to get to the 30. Canning still with it. Yeah, you'll have to ask him, how did it feel being so wide open? Especially that screen pass over the middle. Did, did you even know where the defenders were? They were so far away from you on that one? Well, true, but you got to give him credit. Those were some fantastic moves. He juked the oh, defender yeah. out of his pads. He did two defenders to get to the end zone. Well, and of course, he had to juke out the ref, too. Otherwise, if he kept going straight, he would have run him right over or been tackled. So you juked out the ref, two defenders, ran around everybody around the left, and of course that touchdown into the end zone in the corner. Again, he was, well, maybe not as wide open, but certainly wide open. What could have been for GBS tonight? They had their chances, that's almost picked off, by the way, is Siegel the intended target. What a great defensive maneuver to get to that ball. I mean, it looked like a pretty safe out pass, right? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a Barrington guy flies by and tips it away. Great defense. The out route, it's a good route, partner, but you gotta put zip on the ball if you just lazily pass that ball to the sideline, it can be a pick six. Yep, that's exactly it. I think he just you know, thought, well, if I throw it at this pace, the receiver can catch it, but he needed more pace. They had their opportunities tonight. Drop pass in the end zone, they couldn't convert at fourth and two inside the 20. 
That's a major league pop-up throw, and it's actually thrown to the sideline. Maybe a lack of communication between Von Vecchio and his wide receiver. Meanwhile, third and 10. And well, I like it. He, he knew he had a one-on-one. -on -one. He was going deep with it. I was a little surprised it ended up somewhat underthrown. I don't know. Like you said, the receiver just didn't pick up the ball. It maybe wasn't looking or didn't expect it to come out of the hands quite so quick. But I liked it. You know, it's a pass deep left with a one-on-one. -on -one. It's what you want. Whenever you have that one-on-one, -on -one, you, you let it fling. I would like to see passes when they throw over the middle. There was no safety help in the middle. So when that happens, I'd like to see the, not the fly pattern toward the corner, but I'd like to see it down the middle. It's more of a slant, deep slant. And this is a penalty against them. What happened here? Holding? I never saw a flag. Too busy talking. <laughs> Somewhere there had to have been a flag. Third and 20. Wasn't it second and 10? I, I, yeah, third and 20. So it's third and 20. Not third and 10. Handoff and does not get to the original line of scrimmage. They're down 25. Well, I guess you go for it. You give the seniors one last hurrah on offense. Well, I think this is your way. This is the opportunity in the game to wave the white flag or still try to go for it. Because if you don't make this first down, it's over, right? Well, it's it, over if you punt. I mean, they can't stop the run. Well, well, then, then you're. If that's true, then you're left with you got to go for it. I, I think if you punt it downfield, you can at least get the ball back. If you give it up right here, you're kind of out of it. But this is too far to go for fourth down. Right. I think. So oh, it they, says third. So and it 13. is third down. So the third twenty was wrong. There was no oh, flag. It was second and, and ten. Okay. So it's third and thirteen now. Third and thirteen and twenty six. Makes the handoff on Vecchio with tons of time. Wide open man. Cotton goes down. Very good decision by Cotton. He goes down to stop the clock. Well, I think he went down to make sure he caught the ball. Right? I think he went. No, he already caught it. Then he went down. Either way, it stopped the clock briefly. Yeah, he, it, sometimes you have to go down to catch the ball. If you try to do a hand catch, you know, bend over and reach by your ankles, it's just that trick never works, right? Especially so. Des White. He couldn't catch water if he <laughs> fell out of a boat. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's deep. But, yeah, he didn't have much of an NFL career, did he? First round pick. What was he, number second four? Second round pick. A second round pick? Yeah, David Terrell was the first okay. round pick. Another brilliant Bears decision. Over this is the thrown middle. up for grabs? No. I mean, the Bears are so bad at wide receiver. You can make the argument their best wide receiver the last 40 years is Brandon Marshall. That's pretty bad. Um, he was only here yeah. four years. <laughs> yeah, the Bears really are, are, yeah, the Bears are always a running team and a middle linebacking team, right? We don't need no receivers. You always like to bring up Berrien. You could make the argument Bernard Berrien's a top five wide receiver the last 50 years. Second of 10 at the 42. Takes the handoff. Intercepted, that's a pick six. You always oh. love to see the big man run. It was a good pass. The problem was it was to the other it was to the other team. A perfect spiral right to the defense, right? So what do you want to do if you're Barrington? Do you just run the ball, see if they can stop it, or do you just maybe take some knees? Well, it's obvious you're going to win this game. Yeah, there's a part of me that says, because after turnovers, you always like to take a shot into the end zone. There's a small part of me that says, take your shot right now for 35-3 lead. If you do that, that, hey, that you're, you're allowed, right? But otherwise, if it doesn't work or don't do it, just keep the ball on the ground for the rest of the game. If you don't make a first, you know, four down territory, you don't make a first, they get the ball, no, no loss. Are you surprised that uh, Paper, Marouche, and uh, Fitzgerald are still in the game? Well, uh, maybe mildly. All right, there, there it is on the ground. So I think if you're not going to take that shot, don't. And now keep it on the ground and, and until Glenbrook South gets the ball back again. Because if Glenbrook South gets the ball back, even on this set of downs, it's like yeah. seven minutes to go. There, there's no point in you know, rubbing salt in the wound for one. Second, you, you just don't increase your odds of winning necessarily by, by trying harder to score with a 28-3 lead. So some substitutions being made. Marouche will take a seat, as will Paul Contreras, or actually maybe Alex Schmitz. There's two eights on the roster. Second and 11 at the 30. They're probably just gonna run it three times. Yeah, that's what it. I think. I don't think they'll even punt. There's the pass. 
Uh, you don't want to do that. It stops the clock. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that call either. And even if it was completed, he wouldn't have gained any yards anyway, so you're better off just running it. Well, you are ahead safely 28-3, even if it was intercepted and run back or something crazy like that, right? right. You still have a wide lead. I, I just don't like that that stops the clock. You had a chance to maybe run two minutes off the clock with some running plays. Well, I agree. I think they should have run. But, you know, staying on that topic, though, at the same time, you can run and win the game, but you have to make sure that your whole offense works for next week, right? So you got to make sure that you can execute other kinds of plays as well, and maybe that's what Sanchez is thinking. One-on-one -on -one coverage, what a throw by Piper, and just dropped. Yeah, that was your shot into the end zone that would happen on first, that I thought would happen on first down. They waited till yeah. this down. I like it, but I also don't like it at the same time because it stops the clock again. I, I'm, I'm on the same page, I agree. I, I, I think I just would have continued to run. And right, and that, that's why I asked you if you want to just take three knees. If you take three knees, it runs clock or you force GBS to call timeouts. Yeah, I don't think I would have done knees, but you know, for sure run the ball. You know, run up the middle, then left, then left again, something like that. Stay yeah. in bounds. Paper's still on the field, I don't get this. Yeah. Just punt it deep, see if you can pin him inside the 15. Well, I don't think they care if it's at the 30 or the 15. Right, because, well, I would care because with this new quarterback, this offense looks a little rejuvenalized. Rejuvenated? Yeah. yeah. Rejuvenalized. Yeah. Rejuvenalized. Getting cold. We'll take a timeout. <laughs> it's 28-3 uh, to 3 in favor of the Broncos. Yeah, we need one of those thesauruses. Mute. Putting the cart before the horse? Yep. You're not supposed to do that. Nowadays, you have to, especially in the housing market, where you need to get a mortgage before you find the house. That's why with the Get Committed program from Compass Mortgage, you'll have a fully underwritten loan commitment that stands out even amongst cash offers. Not to mention, once you find the perfect home, you could close in as little as 15 days. Yes. Paper in the pocket, and he's short on the throw. So that would have uh, been a conversion if he had completed it. Meanwhile, it's better field position for GBS, and I don't know, partner, a lot of interesting play calls by Joe Sanchez tonight, and I'd like for him to improve on that going into next week. Yeah, well, I I'm still on the page that he's exercising the whole offense to make sure it's, you know. Right, I mean, you, you got to have confidence well. in these plays going forward in the playoffs, so they've run some of them to see if they could work going forward in the postseason. That, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it, you know, we all know from a football perspective that, that should have been run to eat, eat the clock, right? But I think you're trying some other things to, to make sure that your execution is Right, because you might good. have to run those plays when right. you play Loyola, when you play these other teams. Right. Now, that particular play, actually, it was, it was under thrown up the middle. But uh, on the other hand, on a, on a field that's not quite so slippery, it, you know, the receiver could have come back and made that play, perhaps. They would have had to dive earlier, just, just like Cotton did. But... You know, it's just un unfortunately too underthrown and a slippery field couldn't come back for it. So we'll get to see some more passing from Glenbrook South, which is just kind of fun. First and 10 at the 30. They got a score in the next two to three minutes and then an onside kick. Like four times in a row? <laughs> yeah, you're down 25. And they're going to stick with Bonvecchio the rest of the game, even though they're down 25 points. But again, uh, running, Barrington's doing a great job stopping the uh, Glenbrook South running attack. And look, this game really wasn't 28 to three. And they had their opportunities. Barrington just made some plays. GBS should have had at least 10. It was just a drop in the end zone. Well, this is when you start saying that, you know, even though Glenbrook South is a negative record, you know, they just tend to stop themselves a little bit. Yeah. Bon Vecchio, he's got a clean pocket. Wide open, man. Look at that wheel route. At the 40, at the 30, no one's gonna catch him. Touchdown Cotton, touchdown GBS, and an onside kick coming up. <laughs> we'll see if that onside kick happens, but what a finally, like you said, the wheel route wide open. I mean, more than wide open, as wide open as Marouche was in, in earlier in the game. You just gotta wonder, was Bon Vecchio getting it done in practice? Did, 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 did Showetter have the, uh, 
confidence to put him in in practice with the first team reps. They look like a completely different offense with him at quarterback tonight. Absolutely completely different offense. You know, maybe not to Canning's liking. He's not getting the ball as much, right? But this this quarterback can throw. So they will kick the PAT. I mean, I'd be shocked if they did not do the onside kick. And if they recover that onside kick, things could get a little interesting. Well, it'll be fun to watch. The odds of getting that onside kick are so low, and then you get Barrington the ball at midfield. But if you kick it deep, it's probably at the 20-ish. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you got to get more possessions. They're just—I don't think you're going to have enough time to get three more possessions well, I like to win Clum this football game. Right. Well, I like what Glumberg South did too on that long pass. Right. It doesn't matter if you're 80 yards away or 50 yards away; it's still a touchdown. So, if if Glumberg South feels like they can get long passes like that, the field position battle isn't right. as important. The only issue with kicking it deep is you probably have to call three timeouts because Barrington wisely would just run the ball three times. Even if you stop it, you got to call the, a timeout each play to stop the clock. Well, to me, it's the same difference. It, it, you know, it's you got to stop them whether they're at the 50 right. or at the or 20. Or you just keep recovering onside kicks and you somehow win. <laughs> you do that four times. I think they're going for two here. Did you see that game on Saturday night between Colorado State and Boise State? I didn't watch. Where uh, Colorado State recovered two onside kicks, but they had flags on both plays. Oh, no, I didn't even see that on Sports Channel. No, I didn't yeah, see it. Yeah, Chris saw it. Chris is a better sports fan than you. So they're going for two here to Why try not? to get to 11 and just be down 17 points. And he might have gotten it. Let's see where they spot it. Yep. And it is good. So I like 28 that. to 11. We'll take a quick break. Onside kick most likely coming up next here on SBS. Are you looking for some good food after a Fenwick football game? Then head on over to O'Sullivan's Public House. Located on Madison Street in Forest Park, O'Sullivan's Public House has daily drink specials alongside a year-round beer garden. Open daily from 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. O'Sullivan's PH offers dinner until 10 p.m. Even cooler, O'Sullivan's offers a late-night menu until 11.30 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. On the weeknights, O'Sullivan's has a late-night menu until 11 p.m. And for the fall season, O'Sullivan's will offer 20% off food for athletes and coaches following home Fenwick games. For more information, go online to O'SullivansFP.com. Outside kick coming up. 28 to 11. They have not led all game, and if they recover this onside kick, Bob, things could get interesting very fast. Well, I, it'll take a lot for that yet, so, but Barrington has their all hands team up front. I think I would just kick it deep, and that would be my approach. Let's see what they do do. Andrew Bonvecchio is just a sophomore, by the way. He's 5'11", 175 pounds. So he's a year younger. That's probably yeah. why he hasn't won the starting job yet. But now the question is going to be who will be the quarterback next year because he's putting a real good showing up here. Here he is, and kick, it fell offsides. off the tee, so we have to uh, re-kick. Well, now you know what they're going to do. I mean, I don't think anybody in the stadium shocked by that onside kick. Well, shocked is a strong word, but I, I would kick it deep. I don't know. I just Like I said, you haven't stopped the run all game. At, at this point... The only way you can win this game is probably recover two more onside <laughs> kicks. It just seems like that, right? Well, it is a 17-point lead. It's just hard it, to... It dance. has happened before. We saw it last weekend where Colorado State recovered back-to-back -back <laughs> onside kicks. And then there was a there was a Falcons-Saints football game where the Falcons also had to attempt three onside kicks in a row. I don't know if I like the, or not like that movement where you got one t attempt, fourth and 25, instead of I an hate onside it. kick. I like the onside kick. It's you, They just don't convert anymore because you can't split the formations like you can do in high school. Up in the air, and it did not go 10 yards. Yeah, illegal touching. It's got to go to the 45. Well played by the Broncos, Bob. They were right at the 45, so the only way that uh, that GBS could recover is if it was fumbled by uh, the Broncos or if they legally touched it. 
So now they've got the ball at the 40-ish, right? 44. 44, as opposed to, at, let's say, at the 20. So they gave up 35 yards on that onside I kick. Just, with 7.41 in the game, you haven't stopped the run all game. You just got to Well, if you can't stop it at the 20, you can't stop it at the 50. And I mean, really, at this point, the Broncos don't really want to score any more points. They just want to run this clock out. That's we're, I hope, I mean, expecting that's what you would see. But, you know, obviously what Joe Sanchez was doing was continuing to run the offense more so for next week, I think, than for this game. Yep, false start against the Broncos, a.k.a. cheating. <laughs> A cheater never wins and a winner never cheats, well, except for you, Belichick, all he does is win. Aren't you allowed to do that in the Canadian Football League? Or if you're the New England Patriots <laughs> or the Houston Astros. Uh, Houston lost. They never should or let Carrera get I'm away. I'm excited for the World Carrera. Series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, Texas has never won it before. Arizona hasn't been there since 2001. First and 15 at the 49. And it's a, uh, it's a running play to the right. And they, they were talking about that World Series a lot on the radio. Well, everybody wanted to see Philly because it's a larger metropolitan area. Who cares, man? People that watch the World Series usually love baseball, right? I mean, if you love baseball, it's cool storylines. So which is a bigger town, Barrington or Glenview? We have, to have Barrington. A, we have to have a the larger market win this game, right? <laughs> I would assume Barrington. But Bar do we consider Barrington Hill, South Barrington as separate towns from Barrington? <laughs> That's the question. There's so many different Barringtons around here. Lake Barrington, North Barrington. Second and 10, the 44. There's Fitzgerald again. Look at him, he's just taking a defender for a ride. Another first down. Honestly, there should be an amusement park with the ride called the Dylan Fitzgerald experience. He's just taking defenders for a ride with him. You ever see that commercial, the Michael Vick experience? I haven't seen Michael Vick experience. It's a I, great I don't commercial. I think I would want to see him in a commercial. Why is he in a commercial? No, this was back before the dog fighting. Stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, it was like a, it was a ride where you got on, you know, you put on a football helmet, and it was like a crazy play where Michael Vick would roll to the right, then roll to the left, then he'd be tackled five yards into the end zone. Right. And the commercial ends with Michael Vick says. That's not in the playbook, but it should be. <laughs> then, okay. you know, the off the field stuff happened and no, no more Michael then Vick. No more Michael Vick, right. You know, it kind of reminds me of the Bears' um, Cohen, uh, the human joystick. Yeah. Right. He, then, he might have, you know, need that ride then. So we'll stick with the action here. With 6 10 remaining, it's pretty much all over but the cry. And it's going to be a Barrington win. And the 50 or so people that trekked out from Glenview in the visiting stands are going to be unhappy. 50 or so people. Boy, the Barrington side no, sure the is full. Side, right, yeah. but the Barrington side was absolutely stuffed with people. Our Harper volleyball team last night played, and boy, um, the I've never seen more people in the gym than last night. Fantastic match. We played College of DuPage in the final Well, it was regional. perfect weather last night for a volleyball match. It Especially was, indoors. It was 50 <laughs> degrees and rainy outside, so where else to be than a warm gym? So we got the district championship tomorrow at Harper at one o'clock. That'll be you fun. Win. Yeah, that'll be a good, good game at Harper tomorrow against the district, I mean the regional winner of Ohio. So it's first and 10 at the 33, two wide receivers, two in the backfield. Pretty impressive performance tonight by the Broncos, that's for sure. Fitzgerald again, look at that. It's just effortless right now, and that's going to be a late hit against the Titans. I've never liked that situation where the running back goes out of bounds but keeps running while out of bounds. Right. And then he gets hit by a defender, and then clearly he's out of bounds when he gets hit, so the flag goes flying. I think there's some responsibility on the offensive player once you're out of bounds to stop running out but of bounds. Look, I'm not, a, I'm not a neurologist. I'm not a physician. But when I was an athlete, people would, physicians would tell me, run through the play because when you just stop on a dime, it can hurt your calf a little bit. Well, we're not saying stop on a dime, but he continued to run as if he was still in bounds. Right. And it, I, I don't I like that. I don't think that. there's an easy solution to that problem. It's clearly a late hit. It's clearly bad on the defender. 
But, but I, I can almost that, understand where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, I think the judgment has to be from the referee that the runner still continued to appear as though he was right. gaining he yardage. Be, he should be making more of an effort running clearly out of bounds away from the defense. Right, he was just excited because he made a great run. He's running down the sideline, yay, 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 right? But then the defender clobbers him, and then he gets a flag. And I, I just don't like that. I, if the, there's more plays like that where offensive people can cause a flag by doing things uh, another, a good example of it, when a receiver catches the ball over the middle and is down, then they get back up and start running, and then the safety doesn't know really if he's downed or not, and then he tackles them and then gets a 15-yard penalty on that. I, those are the kinds of plays I just don't think should be flagged. So 56-0, uh, Lincoln Way East defeated Taft tonight. Oh, there's a 70 to nothing game on there. Yeah. This is a well, great scoreboard here at Barrington. It shows the games. It's cool, yeah. Yeah, 28 nothing, Main South over Lockport in the third. And they've got, oh, there it is. Oh, no. 17 17, Necla yeah, Valley, and Valentine. Bellevue East over East Aurora. Yeah. 56 nothing, Lincoln Way won over Chicago and Taft. Remember, St. Ignatius is an 8A this year. They're on the road taking on Joliet West. Yeah, there was an article in the paper, uh, the Daily Herald, talking about all the. Uh, you know the Catholic leagues that you know because they can recruit and sometimes the, the, they're the better teams even though they're a smaller A like a 6A team or a 7A team like last year's Mount Carmel you know, are actually better than the 8A team winner the public league schools well that's that's what would happen well Queen Warrenville South is a public school team but their enrollment would be lower so they would be in 7A and they would beat all the 8A teams in their conference. Right, because they're able to recruit from outside. It's not the size no, of the school. No, 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 Wheaton Warrenville South is public. I'm just saying uh -oh. Naperville Central, yeah. Naperville North, yeah. all those schools are in their conference and they're 8A, and they would they would go undefeated in their conference, but their enrollment was down, so they would play in yeah. 7A and then even win bigger games against smaller schools. Right, right. So I, it would behoove, I think, the state, and that's where the article went, that you might want to revamp this somehow. You know, of course, I think the um, without offering a solution, public school and Catholic schools being different. So with six even minutes remaining, it's going to be first and goal at the 10. There's been, and as we've been pointed out, there's an awful long discussion after that late hit out of bounds. So I don't know what's going on or why Most it's going on. Most likely they're telling the coaching staff, do it again, you're ejected. I mean, it was clearly blatant. And Well, the, the good thing is we have it on you know, video so we can play it back and see just how blatant it was. But like we said, you know, he kept running out of bounds and got leveled. Right. And, and I, I don't know that that's fair and the, either. And what, the, what the, the refs are probably telling the coaching staff too, look, we know your team is frustrated. We know that you're probably not going to the next round of the playoffs, but there's just no need for a hit like that. Yeah, you don't think you're, they're talking about which restaurant they want to go to after the game? Well, every restaurant's closed by now. <laughs> it's Barrington, so the sidewalks do roll up early here. <laughs> First to goal at the 10. And Jackson is stuffed at the point of attack. A very wholesome town. It's a... I have some good memories here. I used to come up here for the IHSA umpire convention. And, Where they uh, teach you to say ball and strike, safe and out. Yeah, and no matter what, no matter how many conventions that you go to, the coaches and the fans always say you're blind. Well, I, I wish last night, yeah, I'm on that page. I wish last night we had a <laughs> volleyball referee as opposed to a, a baseball referee. Baseball umpire? <laughs> yeah, he didn't baseball play. Referee. Yeah, he didn't ref volleyball before he played baseball. Second goal at the 11, oh, dangerous nice pass, still on his feet. Oh my goodness, how about that? A touchdown for Barrington. Another screen pass extraordinaire for the Broncos as catching it and scoring is Connor Fitzpatrick. What was our original prediction? You said 35 to seven? seven yeah. yeah, you're only four points off. I mean, what a perfect prediction you just you know put in there. I guess I get some credit because I seconded it instead of come up yeah, with something we, different, yeah, right? Yeah, we said between 35 to seven or 28 to seven. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that that touch on probably shouldn't have happened. Maybe it did happen because they were getting mad at that late hit or something. But I, I, if I were Barrington, I would have kept it on the ground. But yeah, well, it was a, it was a very easy completion as that's another kick. Well, and I still think it's those plays they're running, they're exercising their offense so that they know they can run that play against a good team next week. We'll take another break. You're watching the Broncos against the Titans here on SBS.
35 to 11, and for Glenbrook South, partner, Mama said there'd be days like this. Mama said that's what's happening right now for the Titans. There's the Bellevue East 70 to nothing win over Aurora East. Wow. 17 yeah. also with Palatine and Nequa Valley. Um, you say yeah, Nequa Valley? Nequa Valley, I'm sorry, yeah. You blew that one. I did. And by the way, it's 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 pronounced East Aurora, not Aurora East. I don't know why they put Aurora East on that Jumbotron. It's nice to see those all those scores up there. It was cool. This is a cool, look at that Bronco up and down, get yeah. louder thing. I mean, this is advanced stuff here at Barrington High School. Good but that, that short 35. pass up the middle, you know, against the blitz from Glenbrook South was just so effective. They've scored two touchdowns on that very same play call. And if I remember, Fenwick ran that play really well a couple of weeks ago when we were broadcasting. Yeah. You know, we, we had three Fenwick match their games, right? And they ran that middle screen. It's not exactly a screen because it's a short pass over the middle, but it has the effect of a screen. And they don't rifle the ball in. It's kind of lofted. On that one, I was a little bit surprised he came up with the catch, but after he got the catch, yeah, it was an easy run into the end zone. So you're, you're Glenbrook South now. Your season's going to end in five minutes and two seconds. What do you do here, right? Well, you, you still be aggressive. You yep. do whatever you can. You know, a lot of these kids will never play football after tonight. Look at that route and throw. The throw was brilliant. The catch was even nicer. Bon Vecchio can play, partner. And the, yes, he can. He's a terrific quarterback. That's what we're seeing. So next year, Glenbrook South is not going to be quite so run heavy. That's for certain. And the offensive tackle was pancaked on the play by the defensive end. And then the quarterback was subsequently pancaked and while he was releasing the ball. That'd be a great highlight film it's shot. I mean, if somebody's looking for a scholarship, the right tackle in Barrington should be getting the one. It's just a beautiful ball to Freddie Feliciano. First and 10 at the 44. They just can't put all these players together in a row. The quarterback flattened again. That time. And that's maybe face guarding, but no call. Did you see that game last night where the Buccaneers, they had fourth and eight, and they were going to give up the ball on, you know, turnover on downs. But then the guy on... Uh, on Buffalo committed a face mask penalty oh, on the, after yeah. the quarterback was being sandwiched by two other <laughs> players. Just don't do the face mask. And then sure enough, uh, the Buccaneers scored. It was a bad pass by Mayfield, but it went off the defensive back's helmet into Mike Evans' bread basket. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, I guess. Well, in good begets luck, right? I mean, if you're not good, you don't get that luck. Second and 10 at the 44. Not a good pass, and that's going to be incomplete. Well, Feliciano, the intended target. I, I'm not so sure it wasn't a good pass, right? I think the receiver went, you know, and turned around, but he needed to come back towards the ball, and he didn't. And I think that was actually a, a good throw, and the receiver didn't run the right route. When you, see, when you see the ball coming at you, and maybe he turned around too late, didn't pick it up soon enough, but he's got to come back to the ball. I think the pass was in the right spot. But I thought that all sports talk radio guests have taught us that it's always the quarterback's fault. It's always the head coach's fault. Yeah, it's nobody always, else's fault. Yeah, yeah, you, you're right. You got to blame. Let's see the quarterback, right? Right. Yeah. It's always that coach's fault. It's always <laughs> the, the quarterback's fault. It's nobody else's fault. Third and ten at the 44, and Bonvecchio cannot get out of the pressure. Tackle made 89. And it's Lucas Van Ness's brother credited. With the tackle, of course, Lucas was picked number 10 overall in the draft by the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, this guy's been in the backfield like the last five plays in a row. Terrific job on defense. He's got his ears pinned back, and he's going around the, the, the offensive line and getting right in the quarterback's scroll. Terrific job on defense. No wonder nobody can score on Barrington. Well, when you got Lucas uh, Van Ness's brother at uh, defensive end, that certainly helps. Yeah, it's not hard to pick them out. One in motion, and GBS will call their last timeout of the game. We'll take our final timeout of the broadcast. You're watching the Titans against the Broncos here on SBS. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. I'm a farm manager, and I'm always here. My service is reliable thanks to Cricket. Reliable service deserves a free 5G phone. Smile, you're on Cricket.
Illinois People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. I'm a farm manager, and I'm always here. My service is reliable thanks to Cricket. Reliable service deserves a free 5G phone. Smile, you're on Cricket. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been interested in the ideas of justice and fairness and equality. That's why I became a lawyer. I have the opportunity to advance these ideals. Now more than ever in our world, it is important that we highlight these issues. It's important that we fight for these issues. And my clients know that Keating Law Offices will not just fight for them, but they will fight for these ideals. People who come to Cricket stay with Cricket. I'm a farm manager. And I'm always here. My no, service is reliable it. thanks to Cricket. Yeah, reliable transition. service deserves a free 5G. In the pocket, and he's going to be sacked. That Barrington line have pinned their ears back, and they are going full force with the quarterback. And right, so far, Glenbrook South hasn't rolled him out. This has left him in the pocket, and the pocket has continued to collapse. Some real nice pancake blocks. So no defense. more timeouts for GBS. If you want, you could just run victory formation three times and then punt it. Or you well, know, if you want to give the, the guys that haven't played a lot this year, you can have them run the ball. Well, I'm going to bet, but I don't know this. You know, I'm going to bet that you know Barrington is done like running through their offense, and they will just keep it on the ground. Victory formation, I think a little too early for that. Um, but I, I would, if I were Barrington, keep it on the ground. But you know, so far, Joe Sanchez has made some calls I wouldn't have made. But that's why he's paid the big bucks as a coach. And he is a good one. 9-0. Still on his feet. They run it to Jackson. Here's the running play we talked about. Now I think they'll keep it on the ground. As he was brought down that time by Dennis Palopoulos. I'm just kind of surprised that Papert's still in the game. I don't know what the point is. But then again, if he's not throwing the ball, he's just handing it off. I guess it's OK. You're not going to go very far, though, if Paper gets hurt. So if he's going to stay in the game, just make sure he, he's not, you know, in a position to be passing it in the pocket. Yeah, don't call any quarterback runs, right? And Paper is indeed going to stay on the bench. Hand off to Jackson. And he might take it to the house inside the 10. Touchdown, Jackson. Touchdown, Broncos. The onslaught is on. Nice run, nice blocking. The Broncos have dominated the line of scrimmage tonight. Yeah, Glenbrook South started the game not tackling especially well, especially when runs went up the middle, and now they're kind of ending the game, not especially tackling very well, and runs going to the outside. He's a nice running back partner. That's a guy they might need to rely on in the postseason, especially if Fitzgerald suffers an injury. Well, let's not wish anything on Fitzgerald, right? right but that but is a good back, a nice, right? Uh, nice option to have at number 34, Calvin Jackson. It just shows how deep Barrington is. Ooh, another line drive. <laughs> We've seen a lot of line drive points from the kickers today. That'll work at this level, not so much if you want to play Division I college football. <laughs> right. Although now it's wrecking your prediction. You had 35, now it's 42. Nice game for Barrington tonight. It got a little interesting. They put in the backup in Bonvecchio, the sophomore, and Barrington. This is why they're nine and zero. They make the adjustments when they need when they need to. They they do, and that's it is exactly why you're nine and zero. You don't go nine and zero without making certain adjustments along the way. But the quarterback change for Glenbrook South looked to me like it's brilliant. I mean, it's time for him to shine. Look out next year, Glenbrook South. They were what ten and one last year, and now they're you know a new quarterback has emerged. Of course, we're also writing off the, the starter for next year. He, he I just may don't not, know how he may not uh, start. Matoa would be the starter after the performance on Bon Vecchio put up tonight. Well, it's kind of a data point of one, but the coaching staff has a lot more data points than we have. I mean, it's a tough spot. You're a sophomore in a playoff game, a do or die game, and he looked good. Yeah. Well, next year, junior still, so it's you know it's not a, not unheard of to junior quarterbacks who are very very good. Then you, ha you hear those crazy stories like Trevor Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence and Rod Blagojevich, not, 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 uh, not Blagojevich, it's Rod Marinovich. 
who played all four years at their varsity uh, high yeah. school. Yeah. Inside the 25, as Canning still has it. That's the one thing he's done well is those kick returns. Yeah. Now, when he's running the ball, do you blame some of it of Canning or just not enough push up front by their offensive line? Oh, tonight, I, I think I give credit to the defense from Barrington. I, I'm, Gomberg South isn't doing in, anything different than they have all year. They're still a good team trying real hard in this kind of a game, right? But Barrington's defense is just able to shut it down. And especially early, they didn't have to worry too much about a passing attack. So they had to really focus on the running game. They did, and that put Glenbrook South in a hole. And Glenbrook South had to adjust by bringing in a, you know, a quarterback that passes more, and he's actually shown to us that he can really play. I think what's really interesting about that Bellevue East game against East Aurora, they do running clock in the second half, and that might be hands to the face by Barrington. Yeah, running clock in the second half, and you're still ahead 70 to nothing. East Aurora, you got to learn how to tackle. Got to be careful, too, partner. A play like that, you can be called for targeting, but. Looked like it was just illegal hands of the face, not like you know head, helmet on helmet action there. Well, a big difference between hands of the face versus helmet yeah, to the face. Yeah, target, because targeting would be an ejection and a one game suspension. Yeah, I didn't remember the team, but there was a, a player that got kicked out at half, around about the halftime for targeting, but then the NCAA came back and said, oops, just kidding. Did they phrase it that exact <laughs> as uh Ted to target was Cotton, the opposing number three for Barrington was there on defense. Oopsie daisy, yeah, you can he, go back in. Yeah, I think he picked the wrong one on one. He had a one on one on the right side and what appeared to be a one on one on the left side and the safety was on this side of the field. I think it would have been a better throw on the other side. And again, I like the crossing patterns too. You know, send one to the post, right? And then send somebody else across the middle. There is no safety in the middle. So I'd like to see more passing you know, across the field rather than down the field. It's easier to connect. So an incomplete pass, Quentin Moos was on the coverage as they'll do another substitution here. Will Glenbrook South is Von Vecchio back in at quarterback. See a single safety. He's got to go one way or other. Nice misdirection play. And a lot of substitutions now into the game for the Broncos as you would expect. So now for Glenbrook South to get in, they just got a score here, get a quick onside kick, get a Hail Mary catch, get another onside kick, get another Hail Mary catch, and then they're back in it. Don't forget about the other two onside kicks they'd have to recover after those two Hail, <laughs> Hail Mary catches. Yeah, clock is unfortunately winding down here. I think we expected the one-sided win, but not by this many. No, no. Another nice throw by Von Vecchio and a touchdown pass. What, what a, a great throw. catch, though. I mean, that looked like it was the old back shoulder behind you kind of a pass, and he had to fight off the Barrington defender while turning around awkwardly, and he made a great catch. Right. The lights here are great, but they're not Division One lights. Like, you can lose that ball in the lights here. Yeah. What, a, what a catch to readjust his body position to make that catch, see it in the lights, and grab it. Yep, he's got to put that in his highlight film for certain. All right, they got the touchdown. Now they just need four more onside kick recoveries. Well, what they really need to do is get the two-point conversion to get 19 points, and then they can say, well, we got 19 points against against Barrington, again against Barrington. What, is there somebody from FanDuel betting on this game and they need the 19? <laughs> they just wanted to get the same 19 as last time. The, the over-under tonight was 60. <laughs> High school football games on FanDuel, great combination, right? Right now we're at 59. This would get this would get right at the uh, at the under at 60. And the flag comes out. So you get a touchdown, and it took you a long time to get your uh, extra point kicker out there. Maybe they were deciding one or two points for too long. You ever seen the movie The Last Boy Scout? Uh oh. No. That's great. But you the. But the, um, well, I'll wait after this extra point, then we'll talk about it. 
So they lost yardage on the false start, but another nice kick right through the uprights, 42 to 18. But what I was talking about, so the it, if, in the movie The Last Boy Scout, the plot is that the bad guys want to legalize sports gambling. But now that movie's outdated because now sports gambling is legal. So, so am I still allowed to like that movie, or is it just a dumb movie now? Well, I, I don't know because I didn't see the movie, but what this comes brings to mind is Pete Rose. You know, he, well, I, he bet on his own team. That's why yeah, he's... But he, yeah, I guess. But to be a lifetime ban for that, and then you get the steroids people in the Hall of Fame, I, I'm not Only following. one steroids person. Well, you don't know that. That's right. We don't know. We, we know we don't and know. And you don't know how many other people gambled on games who they didn't know about, and yet Pete Rose, with the most hits in baseball history, is not in the Hall of Fame. So you can tell I'm a Pete Rose fan that should be in the Hall. Well, I think Shoeless Joe should be, and it was a different era. Yeah, I also do. But, you know, I wasn't alive then, so I didn't you live weren't? that history. Yeah. So I didn't live that history. I don't know. So I, I can't have a firsthand well, we opinion. Could, uh, don't you have a DeLorean in your garage? <laughs> Crank it up to 88 miles an hour so we can see some serious stuff? That's right. Wouldn't that be fun? Go yep. back and invest in the stock market. You know they don't make those anymore? DeLoreans? Yeah. Not you got to buy them on Craigslist. <laughs> on Craigslist, buy a DeLorean. I kind of want to. I wonder if, like... I wonder, like, would yeah, it take it regular gasoline, though? We, well, clearly not. It takes a garbage disposal. <laughs> 1.21 gigawatts? <laughs> Did I ever tell you that story when I was in high school chemistry class? Uh-oh. Did and, you burn something and up? I, and I didn't, I didn't know the answer to the question my teacher asked me. She's like, how many, how many volts of electricity does it take to, like, light up a light bulb or something? And I said, 1.21 gigawatts! <laughs> Guess you got that one wrong. She's like, no, it's not 1.21 <laughs> gigawatts. So the all-hands team is back for Barrington. I'd be shocked if they did it. But you know what? Why not? Let's have some oh, fun. Oh, it's going to be onside. No, it's not onside. I can't get it right. No. He fumbled it. Got it back, though. It's like Bobby Wade returning uh, kicks right there. So they should be kicking onside, and they don't. They don't yeah. kick, and they shouldn't be kicking onside, and they do. All right, 148. So we think Barrington's probably going to be able to hold the ball for the final 148. There won't be a possession change. That's too bad. It'd be fun to watch uh, Glenbrook South with one more long touchdown pass attempt. No more timeouts for Glenbrook South. So you would think they just do victory formation here, but we'll see. Until you get to the NFL level, partner, teams just don't love to do victory formation unless they absolutely have to. And even at college, they'll do shotgun on, on victory formation. Well, I think it goes back to you have limited practice time. It's not like the pros where you can practice all day long every day on these kinds of formations. So they just don't work that formation. I can't think of a game in the NFL where a quarterback fumbled the snap on a victory formation. But there's been so many games in the history of, na of the National Football League, there has to be at least one instance of it, right? You would think, right? But here, here we are in high school, and if they don't practice it, they, they don't practice it. It happens, though, man. I mean, in any sport, really. I, I saw a highlight. I mean, here you got, you know, um, this is anything but a victory formation, right? Got four receivers all over the place. I was just going to bring up in baseball, I saw a highlight in minor league baseball where they did a they did a, 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 an intentional walk, you know, and the catcher and the, and the pitcher threw it over the catcher's head and the guy from third base scored. There's no, there's no <laughs> such thing as a guarantee on those. Oh, you just throw, you know, throw it to the outside. Hand off up the middle. So we'll probably get one more of those, and I don't know if the clock will run out by then. So who do we want for the postgame show, Marouche or Fitzgerald? Yeah, boy, oh, both of them would be a good choice. I mean, it, it, boy, either one is a great pick. What do you want to do? You're going to be asking the questions. I would do Matt Marouche. I think those jukes were pretty darn impressive. I mean, that was really the game-changing play. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, you know, Fitzpatrick not being able to stop him on the run was the other game-changing. Yeah, he had some nice touchdowns right. in his own right. They got some players here, and don't forget about Piper. He just didn't have to do a lot tonight. Up the middle. And why not? Just That'll another finishing touch run to finish off this game, and that'll do it. The Broncos are advancing to the round of 16. Glenbrook South season is over. Final thoughts, partner, before we go to the postgame show. Well, it was a very one-sided game. Barrington just really took it to them. They actually do very much look like a potential state champion. It was an honor to be here and, and, and you know call this game.
So for our excellent crew, for Nolan Harmon, for, for Serge Ower, for Chris Angela and Bob Vilsaway, I'm Kyle Smith, post game show coming up next. But for now, that does it for our broadcast. You're watching Sports Broadcast. Hi, I'm Sean Rugsad, Caldwell Banker Realty. I'm out of the Glenview, Illinois office. I left Caldwell Banker a time of transition, thinking that the grass was greener on the other side. Uh, I was gone for two years and I realized
belong in the Basketball Hall of Fame. To answer a question with a question, would the Basketball Hall of Fame's legitimacy be in question if Jermaine O'Neal was inducted into it? The answer is no. O'Neal had a fine career, a good career, better than most NBA players and even most athletes can say that they had. At his absolute peak, you could have made the case that he was one of the best 10 to 15 players in the world. But as good as his peak was, it lasted between three to six seasons, probably closer to three. The rest of his career was, at best, a high-end role player and, at worst, an injury-prone scrub. The Malice at the Palace definitely put a permanent stain on an overall good NBA career because, once again, it's voted by the sports writers. And when you have negative publicity around you, that can follow you when it comes to Hall of Fame voting. But let's be honest, it's not like it's the only thing keeping him from being a Hall of Famer. Derrick Rose had an incredible peak of his career. He was an MVP who took his team to the conference finals. Do his three all-star seasons put him in the Hall of Fame? Penny Hardaway made three all-NBA teams and was the second best player on a team that made the NBA finals. Does he deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Not to rag it on Neil, Hardaway and Rose's careers, they were all good players who had some great seasons that deserve to be remembered. But when you think of the Basketball Hall of Fame, you think of the absolute best. Guys like Kareem, Bill Russell, Kobe are all players you immediately think of when thinking about the Basketball Hall of Fame because of their prolonged success. Even Hall of Famers during O'Neal's era like Shaq, Dirk, Tim Duncan, and Kevin Garnett were great because of their greatness spanned nearly two straight decades. Even during his peak, O'Neal was never quite on the level as those four. Ultimately, O'Neal had a respectable career that deserves to be remembered, but he just didn't play like a Hall of Famer for long enough to be one. But what do you think? Should Jermaine O'Neal be included into the Hall of Fame consideration? Make sure to comment below and subscribe to Sports Broadcast Solutions. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been interested in the ideas of justice and fairness and equality. That's why I became a lawyer. I have the opportunity to advance these ideals. Now more than ever in our world, it is important that we highlight these issues. It's important that we fight for these issues. And my clients know that Keating Law Offices will not just fight for them, but they will fight for these ideals.